1998 national champion. Nebraska won the national title in 94, 95, and 97. Two of the most successful and storied programs in all of college football. And they've come to the desert tonight to meet on the field where they won this sports top prize. The Huskers roll into Tepe wearing the Big 12 crown and flaunting one of the fiercest, fastest defenses in all of college football. Tennessee is lightning fast and licking its chops to play on the field where it beat Florida State. T. Martin, 22-2 and two as a starter, almost flawless, engineering a balanced attack. The last two national champions are about to start the new millennium. Odds football weather in the desert. A clear, chilly night in Tempe, Arizona. 48 degrees, but Sun Devil Stadium is sold out. More than 73,000 fans. A great scene for a terrific matchup. Welcome to the 2004 Taurus pregame show featuring number three, Nebraska, and number five, Tennessee. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt, along with Dean Blevins. Glad to have you along for what really should be a terrific matchup. Both of these clubs, only a couple of plays away from being unbeaten, both have terrific defenses. But, Dean, let's start with the offense, because we're talking about marquee quarterbacks, Tennessee. T. Martin, he is special. He's a winner. He's a warrior also. And, you know, appropriately, he's from a hometown called Mobile, Alabama. You spell that M-O-B-I-L-E. Mobility. <laughs> you know, he's mobile. That will be the key to this game tonight, I believe. His ability to keep the Nebraska defense honest is going to be the thing that has to happen for Tennessee to have a chance tonight. They have to have enough run game to have balance. Now, on the other side, of course, Nebraska has a great one. Eric Crouch, the coaches say he could be the best that Nebraska has ever had. Well, Tommy Frazier, maybe a lot of guys that would like to say, let's hold off on that, but he's a very good player. He's got sprinter speed. He's a good thrower. He makes great decisions. He's tough. But I think tonight, the focus of this ball game for Nebraska will be on number 12, Bobby Newcomb. He's played quarterback. He's played wing back. He's played wide receiver. He's, he's returned punts. But Frank Solich told me tonight they're going to do more with him. For the first time, he's going to play eye back tonight. He's also going to return kickoff. So watch out for this guy. He is a spectacular athlete. Partner, we've talked to a lot of players this week. We've talked to all the coaches. And to the man, they all still believe they are the best in the country. We'll be back right after this. Just moments from kickoff the 29th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Let's go down to Leslie Goodell, who's with Nebraska head coach Frank Solich. Tim, Coach Solich is looking for his first bowl victory as a head coach. Coach, two similar teams in the respect that they're both very physical, they're both very disciplined teams. How do you guys gain the edge in this one? Well, we hope that, uh, that we'll be able to move the ball a little bit on the ground. Whoever can do that and establish some kind of a ball control game probably has a good chance. Both teams have great players. Uh, really special programs and whoever has the edge is going to win it of course we hope we can get it in some form on offense defense has been playing great all year both teams have great special teams thank you coach similar Thanks. words from Phil Fulmer before the game he said they need to stop the run establish the run be explosive but most importantly not let Nebraska get out early Tim all right Leslie thank you very much Nebraska won the toss and deferred Tennessee will receive the opening kickoff Tennessee won the national title here just a year ago. Comes in tonight with a 9-2 record. Nebraska has won three national championships since 1994. The Huskers only loss this year was to Texas. That was October 23rd, a four-point loss. Also just a couple of plays from undefeated. Nebraska beat the Longhorns in the Big 12 title game to get here. You know, Tim, we've had a, a chance to look at these two teams for a long time now. And what terrific programs. They are so evenly matched with talent, with tradition, with coaching. And in looking at which team might have the advantage, the only advantage I see so far is in practice, the noise simulator was turned up a little louder at Tennessee. So maybe that gives them the edge. That means you're getting old. <laughs> this is only the second time these two schools have ever met on the football field. Nebraska beat Tennessee January 2nd, 1998, 42 to 17. That was in the Orange Bowl. Dan Haddonfeld is preparing to kick off and deep for Tennessee will be Leonard Scott and folks Leonard Scott is the sprint champion there's a look at Haddonfeld He is the fastest player to ever play at the University of Tennessee Haddonfeld's got a large leg though we'll see how he does 
Scott will go five yards deep and down it there. Touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20, and that's where Tennessee will start. So the Tostitos starting lineups, Tennessee's offensive line is massive. The line averages 310 pounds. Clifton and Tucker, the tackles. Weary and the All-American Coleman at guard. Spencer Riley is huge for a center, 6'3", 305. Wide receiver Cedric Wilson has been the go-to guy, but he's struggling with a groin strain and a sore hamstring. Travis Henry starts at tailback. You'll also see a lot of Jamal Lewis. T. Martin, of course, is a warrior. Crosby and Henry in the backfield. First down, Volunteers. Henry, straight ahead, not much. He runs straight into Warren and Kaiser. Nebraska's defense, maybe the best ever in Lincoln. Defensive line, Steve Warren and Lauren Kaiser, who's just in on that tackler, as good as it gets in the middle. Wills and Vandenbosch combined for seven sacks this year. He also blocked three field goals. Outside linebackers are all seniors, while Carlos Polk is the one who is in the most uh, dominant spot there in the middle. Inside linebackers, the black shirts are, could be the best they've ever had. The Browns are not related, but both All-Americans. This defense is special. Tennessee goes up top. Intended for Martin, thrown out of bounds. And this game could very well come down to how many big plays the teams make in one-on-one -on -one coverage like that. There will be a lot of isolation, cornerback, or safety with wide receivers. Help us out with T. Martin. Well, you know? T. Martin is, is outstanding. Obviously, his mobility slows the defensive pressure. He doesn't rattle. He plays great late in ball games. And I bet his only weakness is this is his final game. I mean, I couldn't hardly come up with any. He'll be, a, he'll be drafted in the NFL and have a chance. Third down and seven. T. Martin's second pass. He's got pressure. And he's sacked. Vanden Bosch got there first, his fifth sack of the year. 6'4", 270 pound junior, and he got there in a hurry. Vanden Bosch does a great job of containing. Now, he's, here he is. He has two ways of playing tonight. He can come around and keep containment like that, and rarely will he be able to pursue and catch T. Martin, or he can play aggressively and come after him. And that, if he does that, T. Martin will have a chance to get on the outside. Flags fly everywhere. They'll stop this play. No play. They'll bring this back. The officials tonight, Bill Lamonier is the referee. All from the Big Ten. Tony Mikulik is there. Steve Beckman, Tom Ransom, John Perry, who is the son of David Perry. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, go fourth down. Look at Phil Fulmer in his eighth season as head coach, and what a run it's been. 76 wins, the national title, and the Eddie Robinson Coach of Distinction Award. And I agree with him. He told us, he says, this will be a heavyweight fight. Not a good start for Tennessee, though. Three and out and a penalty. David Leverton will do it again. He averages 43 yards a punt. This is a knuckleball. Luka, great field position for Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb brings him back to the 43-yard line, so it's only a 38-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Take a look at the Tostitos starting lineups for Nebraska offensively. Their line is big as well. Strong and quick. Jolts and Sherman are the only seniors. Rayola is the all Big 12 center. The line averages over 300 pounds per man. Matt Davison and Sean Applegate are the skilled guys. Don't forget Bobby Newcomb. He's a star. Tracy Wistrom, bad knees out. Eric Galladay starts at tight end. In the backfield, it's Eric Crouch at quarterback. Big 12 co-offensive player of the year behind him. Willie Miller and Dan Alexander. Alexander's 245 pounds, and here he is. Big hole. Pushes the Tennessee defense all the way across the 35. And he'll be about a yard and a half short of the first. Defensively, Tennessee didn't allow a rushing touchdown through the first seven games, only three for the year. Ellis and Overstreet have combined for 16 sacks. Henderson stepped in when Billy Ratliff's season ended with a broken leg in October. And Darwin Walker's all everything. Linebackers, Raynock Thompson, the All-American, is the leading tackler for the second straight year in the secondary. Deion Grant has nine interceptions. Not much there. Tennessee closes down on Willie Miller almost immediately. Right, 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 right. 
Nebraska gets great field position here. The first play looks so reminiscent of the last time these two teams played in the Orange Bowl when Nebraska wins the 97 championship. Good play there by Tennessee and Nebraska. Don't be surprised if the Huskers after giving a heavy dose of option here early try something deep. A loss of two on the last play. It'll be third down and a long three. Option. Crouch. Keeps it himself. Big hole. Crouch across the 20. Crouch to the 10. To the seven yard line. Eric Crouch, the 6'1, 195 pound sophomore. A gain of 30. This play opened up exactly the way Nebraska wants it. They seal off the inside with the offensive lineman. Crouch brings it down to the cornerback, and that's his pitch man. And then there's poor tackling in the secondary. Deion Grant, a terrific safety, the best in the country, but not a terrific tackler, and there's a good example of it. Crouch ran for 889 yards during the regular season. Straight ahead they go. Dan Alexander. Wow. And it's deafening in here. Nebraska makes this look easy. Alexander is basically a six foot muscle. This guy is all brawn bouncing off tacklers again. There's seven. Tim Grant misses an opportunity for a tackle again. Very impressive, quick, short drive by the Huskers. Josh Brown for the extra point. Splits the sticks, and it's 7-0 Cornhuskers. Well, it didn't take long. But Dan Alexander from Wentzville, Missouri, puts Nebraska on the board. Crouch on the left set up the touchdown with a 30-yard run. And Dan Alexander there punched it in from seven yards out. He became the starter at Ibach the third game after the departure of D'Angelo Evans. So Dan Hayden felt will kick off again. And Tennessee will have its second possession of the football. Leonard Scott this time eight yards deep. No return. Second touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And that's where they'll start. Dean, take us through the Dell game solutions. Well, if the key for Tennessee coming into the game is to impose their power running game. And that's going to be difficult for them to do based on that first series. They're going to have to really work at that. They've got to win the one on one battles when their wide receivers get locked in man coverage. If they can win three or four of those and bust them for big plays, they're in great shape. Nebraska defensively is keep the pressure on the quarterback, but you have to contain him at the same time, and that's doubly difficult. Crosby and Henry in the backfield along with T. Martin. First down and 10. This is Travis Henry. Tries to bounce outside, but again, runs into a lot of the red shirts from Nebraska. Deion Booker got there first. Well, offensive coordinator Randy Sanders tells us that he will have to be hard-headed with the run game in this game. Tell me about Tennessee. Now, what do they want to do early in this ball game to get on track? Well, establish that type of power game, except they need some positive yardage. You know, it'll be hard to be patient if you can't have the success, but they have to establish that to keep the pressure off the quarterback. Nebraska is dominating every play, every phase of the game so far. Second down and nine, almost ten. Play action. T. Martin has a lot of company. Throws back into coverage incomplete. And now a flag comes down. Ball was intended for John Finlayson, and he had a lot of company back there. And this is against Nebraska. And that'll go from the spot of the foul. T. Martin. T. Martin is really solid. Now, he won't make people forget about Peyton Manning, but he's done a terrific job replacing him. Tennessee never lost a game at home the last two seasons with Martin the starter. He's 22 and 2 overall. That play was well defended, but it was a good call. That was interference on Booker. First down, volunteers. Again, a lot of pressure 
and Martin runs it up the middle to the 34. Steve Warren gets credit for the tackle. This is a terrific Nebraska secondary. I mean, you, you know you have Mike Brown and Ralph Graham, just unbelievable senior players. They're, they're as good at their positions as you'll ever find. Deion Booker's a nice free safety, and the young guy, Keo, Keo Craver, is a terrific cornerback. But having said that, they're going to have the people covered most of the night, so you're going to have to see a lot of scrambling up the middle, and that time the Nebraska defense was able to close quickly. Well, the go-to guy has been Cedric Wilson. We'll see what they do here. They swing it outside. This is Martin. David Martin has a big hole. David Martin to the 30 to the 20. Boy, he saw all kinds of daylight before Julius Jackson could take him down. They'll mark it at the 17 after a 48-yard run. This time, Tennessee gets away from the pressure. They get all the heat on T. Martin. Two receivers stalking their men out front. Splitting the middle is David Martin, a guy who's been around steady. He hasn't made big plays throughout the year. And he has a hurt ankle, but still that's a big time play. He got a great block out there. And it was a perfect pass. Hit him in stride. And the sideline hole just opened up to a gap and he split it. Perfect timing. First down and 10. That's a penalty. Had two men moving. This is Lewis. Jamal Lewis. Is hit by Mike Brown, but there is a flag in the backfield. And this might be one you consider turning down here. This will be a five-yard penalty on the Volunteers. Jamal Lewis, a junior, Tennessee's leading rusher, really banged up the last four games with a shoulder and an ankle injury, had an Achilles problem, but he averages four yards a carry, and Philip Fulmer wanted to get him into the ball game early, so he's in here now, but they're hurt by the penalty. Illegal shift, offense, two men moving, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's got to be a mix-up. You can't have two men in motion, and so they penalize them, they move them back. It'll be first down and 15. Nebraska's defense just totally dominant. Look at those numbers. 12 and a half points, 53 sacks. That's better than the 97 defense. Charlie McBride just does a terrific job as coordinator. And he has some pretty good tackles. Out of the shotgun, T. Martin stumbles. He'll lose yardage. So after the big gainer of 48 yards by David Martin, T. Martin stumbles and they're going backwards. T. Rudd's are going anywhere, even if he hadn't stumbled. That was a called quarterback draw. And Steve Warren, 96, shows why he will be a high draft choice in the NFL and play there a long time. He is a stud in the middle. Tennessee wanted to put this defense on its heels early. They haven't done it. Nebraska being very aggressive and right now extremely confident. Nebraska has the perfect combination defensively. They have incredible speed, but they also have enough power guys up front to handle the run most of the time. Second down and 18. Martin again under a lot of problems. Incomplete. This play is made by the defensive end. Does a great job here. Tennessee thinks they can get outside the pressure. And they can on that. That is actually defensive tackle, Lauren Kaiser. And Kaiser is a big, I mean, he's 6'4", 295, yet he was able to loop outside as the end crashed down and contained T. Martin. Tennessee hoping to do a lot of those naked bootlegs tonight, but they need to have more open space for T. There's a look at Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator. He's a great one. And they'll be coming now, third and 18. They like slants here to hit the guy in stride. T. Martin tries to run it out. He won't. Steve Martin has him again. Steve Martin, 6'2", 305 pounder. All Big 12, second team All-American. And he is special. He had the flu against Colorado, and that could have been his only average game, but he's as good as it gets in the middle. Big, quick, and tough. Yeah, Warren told me yesterday that he loves this matchup. You know, he's getting some of Cozy Coleman, the All-American right guard for Tennessee, and he really has looked forward to this matchup. This is a 45-yard attempt by Alex Walls. And it's no good. It had the distance, but it was wide left. 7.42 to play in the first quarter. It's still 7-0 Nebraska. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, Leslie Goodell with you at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. 7.42 to play in the first quarter. 
of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. It's seven nothing Nebraska and the Cornhuskers have the ball again. Dan Alexander's the step back behind Eric Crouch. Play action they throw out in the flat wide open. It's Damian Bowman. Correction that's bowling. And John bowling all the way to the 44 yard line. The Huskers making Tennessee look kind of silly right now. Perfect play action. They have to suck up on Alexander. They look to go deep. It's not open, so they dump it off underneath. Where are the linebackers? Bowling too open on that play. Time for Tennessee to regroup. Westmoreland, who is back off of injury, trailing there and makes the stop. Gain of 28 yards. Tracy Wistrom is out tonight at tight end. He's injured. And so a lot of young tight ends are playing, including John Bowling, who's just a freshman. First down, crouch across the 45 to the 44. Nebraska running a lot to the left, Dean. Yeah, and that was a great job there by a player who is being, being hammered here. They're going to the strength of their offense. Jolts, the offensive tackle, 69 is terrific. And watch the tight ends block down on 90, Overstreet. Overstreet, 90, came back to make a great play there, but phys physical dominance by the tight ends. And you bring up a good point. With Wistrom out, that hurts them in the pass game, but Aaron Galladay and those guys' debates are big, strong blockers. Well, Overstreet has a great motor, but he's undersized at 250 pounds. Here they get him. Alexander hit by Sean Ellis almost immediately, and he'll lose yardage. Well, and you say he's undersized. He's undersized against a normal-sized tight end, and Aaron Galladay, although he's a freshman, is 270 pounds. When we talk to the coaches about Will Overstreet, they say he's sound fundamentally, he's solid technique, he really gets upfield, but he is small. And so they've doubled down, as you just saw, and you just pointed out, Dean, and that's difficult to overcome. Two things to watch for on this third down play. I think, first of all, you have to look out to the right, number 12, Bobby Newcomb, and also look for either a sprint, one way or the other, by the quarterback. Third, 13, the option. Alexander. Alexander gets down to the 43, so they get back to the original line of scrimmage, plus one. Well, coming up Tuesday night on ABC, it's the national championship. The Seminoles look to give Coach Bobby Bowden his first undefeated season and a second national title. But can Michael Vick and Cinderella Virginia Tech upset the Knowles for the first national title ever? Number one, Florida State battles number two, Virginia Tech. That's the Nokia Sugar Bowl. That's coming up Tuesday night on ABC. Also, don't forget January 30th, Super Bowl 34 in Atlanta. All part of Super January on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Dan Hayden felt on the punt for Nebraska. So Tennessee has made a critical stop here. They needed that one badly. This punt will hit at the five and go out of bounds at the four yard line. A 36 yard punt and it pins the Volunteers. 5.25 to play, first quarter. There are the numbers on T. Martin, and look, Dean, how he improved, especially in the last four games. Yeah. Phenomenal. Six touchdowns, one interception. In fact, Tim, he has gone 82 passes coming into this game without an interception. Quality young man, first down for Tennessee, but backed up at the five. Here's the get straight ahead. And Jamal Lewis bangs his way out. They'll mark it at the eight. Now, that was a nice stand defensively by the Volunteers. Now their offense has to do something for them. Carlos Polk, third team, will come right in your living room on a blitz. But a great blitz pickup that time by Bartholomew. And a little running room there for Lewis, who is healthy for the first time in six weeks. Second down and call it seven. Again, they go off tackle. And again, it's Lewis. Across the 10 to the 13, not enough for the first. They'll be about three yards short. Ralph Brown with the tackle. You know, Dean, looking at what's taken place so far here in the fir first quarter, and of course we have 435 yet to play, but I have to look at Danny Haydenfeld, the kicker, <laughs> as the MVP. He's well, put two of his kickoffs deep into the end zone. Tennessee had to start at the 20. Then he had this punt inside the five. Well, he's a stud. I was afraid he wouldn't be out here at practice the other day. One of his guys blocked a punt on him, and you don't ever do that to your own punter, but he averages 44.98 per kick. Big play here. Third down. Tennessee needs two. The pitch back. This is Lewis. 
not going to get there. Can't go east and west on this Nebraska team. I mean, they line up running back sprinters at linebacker. You are not going to outrun them. Kaiser, the defensive tackle, gets out there. But when we're talking about the Nebraska linebackers, and we'll take a look at it, watch the pursuit of these linebackers as they fly to the football. You're talking about guys like Eric Johnson and Shaw and Ortiz and Polk. Those guys, they literally have sprinter speed. David Leverett in the cut. Walker and Newcomb are back for Nebraska, and this is a shot. What a punt. Oh, look out for Newcomb. Newcomb across the 40. Newcomb across the 30. Bobby Newcomb. He'll score. 60-yard return by Bobby Newcomb. Folks, we told you he is a star. Well, Nebraska that time actually came with a punt block. Frank Solich thought he might be able to get a punt blocked in this game, and for the second time, they almost do get the block right there. Yet they have enough ability on the return game to bust this. Watch Ralph Brown, 22, the up back. He gets his man, and I'm telling you, when you see this opening, this guy takes off. Dean, he outpunted his coverage. And the extra point is good, but the punt was 48 yards with a hang time of 4.5 seconds. The coverage ran past Newcomb, and Newcomb returned it to the house from 60 yards out. It's all Nebraska in the first quarter. Watch Ralph Brown take care of the punter. Levin has no chance, and Bobby Newcomb is on the scoreboard. Nebraska totally dominant in every phase of the game. This is a severe challenge right now for Tennessee to regroup. The last Fiesta Bowl punt return for a touchdown was way back in 1988. Dana Brinson returned it 52 yards, but Bobby Newcomb just topped that with a 60-yard return. Hayden Field has one that will be returned by Leonard Scott this time. And Scott can fly. Scott returns it to the 23-yard line. Hey, want to join ABC Sports in Atlanta for the Super Bowl? Here's your chance. Watch Monday Night Football for all the details this Monday night. But remember, you got to watch to win. You could be heading to Atlanta for the Super Bowl, courtesy of ABC Sports. Tennessee better watch out. If they get too far behind, they get in a must-pass mode, and really, that... that that puts the ball game so much in Nebraska's hands. They love to devour quarterbacks that way. Ask Major Apple how to touch it. Straight ahead, Jamal Lewis breaks two tackles and carries it out to the 29-yard line before Mike Brown takes him down there. I think this is a there's a very good chance that this is the last collegiate game for Jamal Lewis. He's only a junior, but the hints are that he's coming out. And running like that, he'll have a chance in the NFL. He's been slowed down by some injuries. This guy, early in his career, Tim, as a freshman, he, he looked like he had Heisman written all over him, and the injuries have hurt him a little bit, but he's running well right now. He's had a bad ankle, a sore shoulder, shoulder had that knee injury last year. Second down and four for the Volunteers. Three-step drop, quick out. They've got it complete. Close to a first down. Cedric Wilson has the catch. What a great look down on Sun Devil Stadium on a gorgeous night in Tempe, Arizona. The aerial coverage provided by Tostitos. Nice pick up there. T. Martin saw what he wanted. He got, had some soft coverage on his favorite receiver, Cedric Wilson. And he was able to take advantage of that. And Wilson got just enough yardage to pick up the first down. Both of these quarterbacks had the flu earlier in their practice schedules down here. T. Martin had it earlier this week. Here he has time and throws the out. The flag pattern, it was intended for Leonard Scott, overthrown incomplete. But yeah, problem Martin there. was yep. weak for a couple of days. That's right. His, his mother actually was in the hospital with the same type of problem. And uh, he's 100% though, and so is Eric Crouch. I think I'll go join her. <laughs> <laughs> that right there, though, had a chance of being open. It was a post-corner route, had a lot of feel to work with. But the key to that was the pass rush. The offensive line of Tennessee is being whipped right now, and you're talking about a couple of big-time players up there in Clifton and Coleman. They need help. Tennessee needs 10 on second down. Here's the pitch to Lewis. Great block on the corner. And Lewis picks up three. He'll still need about eight more for the first. 
Well, we just talked about Monday night. We want you to watch. You could be going to the Super Bowl, but don't forget it's the finale of the 30th anniversary season of Monday Night Football. But will this be the final game for the NFL's all-time leading rusher, Jerry Rice, or leading receiver, rather? San Francisco 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons. That's live, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. ABC Sports, Monday Night Football. Jerry Rice says he still wants to play, but will he be able to? Will the 49ers allow it? This club struggling in third downs. Again, they like slant routes. They like to hit receivers in stride. He's got time. They need seven. This ball almost picked off. Oh, Craver was there, had his hands on it, but couldn't make the interception. It was intended for Leonard Scott. Well, that's talent on talent. And that time, the defensive talent wins out. Keo Craver, number three, has a chance to be the best cornerback ever at Nebraska, we're told. Look at him with a jump here. That is well covered. You almost have to come off of that and go to your second receiver. Tennessee has a bad case of the Ophers. They're 0 for 4. Had the football four times, and they've had to give it back to Nebraska on each one. This is Newcomb again, and this time he's taken down immediately. Returns. Punt returner has such an advantage now with that Keon halo rule. Son. The punt cover guys have to be so careful and come under control before they get within yeah. that halo. Yeah, the six-foot area, and the, the, the most for sure yeah, bet in college football these days is that you're going to see a halo violation in the game. But Nebraska has a second man returning back there, and this guy is supposed to protect the, the punt returner. Take a look at the... AT&T player comparison right after this first down play by Nebraska. Play action. Crouch looks. Has a man open. And he can't make the completion. But John Bowling had come all the way across the field on a crossing pattern, and it was incomplete. Here's your AT&T player comparison, Dean. T. Martin. Quarterbacks, two for five, 45 yards, and Eric Crouch hadn't had to do much, Tim. He's one of two, but he had the wheels early, and he has some hosses in front of him and behind him. So he has a lot of support, and T. Martin doesn't at this point. So far, Crouch has been surgically sharp with his operation of the option. Here's Alexander straight ahead. Well, for the first time, Nebraska is having to start deep in its own territory. Now, they had the first possession out of the Tennessee 43. On the other hand, Tennessee's been backed up. They were in their five-yard line, their 20, their 20, and their 24. So it's been a, a tough go for Tennessee from the field position standpoint as well. Sprint out is what Nebraska thought coming into this game might be effective on third downs against this defense. Husker spread the field on third down and eight. Crouch with a bullet, and it is almost picked off. Ray Knock Thompson had his hands on it and could not bring it in. Ray Knock Thompson is was so much looking forward to this game after being humiliated in that game down at the Orange Bowl. This is a little slant route, and I don't think that Eric Crouch saw Ray Knock Thompson, the linebacker. You've got to spot the linebacker if you're a quarterback. Let your eyes go to the middle. Find those linebackers. That's where you can get eaten alive, and he might have returned that one for a touchdown. So Hayden Felt will come on to punt again, and he has been booming them tonight. Watch those hands! This is a low liner. Parker will try to fair catch it and does, and there it is. There it is, the penalty <laughs> against the halo violation. The halo violation. I cannot stand that rule. I was a cover guy, and that <laughs> yeah. rule would drive me crazy. Well, I'm a pacifist. I think you've got to have that rule there. I mean, otherwise, it's uh, why would you it's ever dangerous. Even, why would you ever even be bothered if you're the receiver? Two-yard foul, foul, five-yard penalty, first down. What an advantage, though. The punt receiver never has to worry about being hit until after he catches the ball, and even then, it probably won't be at full speed. I'm offense. Sell tickets. Um, let's go score. Let's give the offense the advantage. Put points on the board. I say let them, if they get down that quickly, let them have a shot at a slobber knocker. <laughs> well, they're rolling Travis Henry and Jamal Lewis at this point in the game, and the philosophy was to let them play two series each and then take whichever one's hot. Tennessee's best starting field position in this ball game. Straight ahead they go up to the 48-yard line. That's where it's marked. 
That should be the last play of the first quarter. Well, the first quarter has been all Nebraska. Crouch with a 30 yard run. Alexander finished it with a seven yard touchdown, and Newcomb with a 60 yard punt return. 14 0 Cornhuskers over the Volunteers. Has to get in this ball game as we start the second quarter. He's got to get comfortable, get everybody around him moving, and he's been able to do that in the past. Look at that number 22 and 2 as a starter, a national championship, and Phil Fulmer says that he wills us to win in tough games. He will have to will them to win this game starting out 14 zip. The give is to Travis Henry, who picks up a couple of tough yards on second down. So far, T. Martin is two for six, 55 yards. First team all conference. He wants to try to mix things up. We talked to him several times this week, and he said, We need to get that aggressive defense on its heels, make it unsure of itself. And so far, he's been unable to do it. Third down and one. Tennessee spreads the field, trying to spread that defense thin. Martin out of the shotgun. Is not going to get there, gets Martin back to the line of scrimmage. Dean, third down and one. Why do they go to the shotgun? Well, uh, saying that you're dedicated to power football, I wonder that as well. They respect this Nebraska defense so much that they feel they have to have a moving pocket and let T. Martin make plays. He had no chance there, though. So Tennessee squanders its best field position of the night and will punt on fourth and one. David Leverton is back again. Kramer standing on his own 10. This is a low liner that they actually kick away from him. And it rolls just barely across the goal line Number for a three, touchback. So you know, a 48-yard punt, and they'll bring it out to the 20. Those yards are so critical. I mean, if you can get down there and cover that thing inside the 5, 15 yards is so critical in games like this. Now, Nebraska has eaten the chunks of 15 up pretty quickly, but typically, and I think later in this game, you'll see that 15 yards will be hard to gain. Partner, I know you're a big fan of this show, and guess what's back? What's back? Tuesdays, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, starting January 11th. NYPD Blue is back on ABC. The season premiere, you've waited a long, long time to see. NYPD Blue returns January 11th right here on ABC. First down and 10. The Huskers go straight ahead with the fullback, Willie Miller. He's 6'1 and 245 pounds, but Tennessee jams him up pretty good. You know, Tim, Tennessee is getting back into the thing in terms of its defense holding up. The offense is going to have to put points on the board, but I think the defense will have to continue to shut down Nebraska. You can't let them jump out any further. I'll tell you something else that hasn't happened. Nebraska had 49 fumbles in 12 games, yeah. and they lost 24 of them. And Tennessee expects some turnovers, but they haven't gotten them yet. Alexander bangs up to the 29. He'll be a yard short of the first. Nebraska has such a potent offense in the sense that they are about a third option and a third of the time power football right at you. Look at these big offensive linemen led also by the fullback Miller just coming straight ahead. And Tennessee felt coming into this game that they were so much better prepared to play against power football because their guys were bigger and stronger and they had more depth. Third down and short, straight ahead they go. Quarterback sneak, crouch, he'll be close. Well, we talked about that offensive line team. Every single one of them, over 300 pounds. Jolts, 320. Sherman, 300. Rayola, 299. Hochstein, 299. Volk, 300. And they're going against that defensive line. You've got Overstreet, who's only 250 pounds. Ellis, under 270. Henderson is 280. And Walker's 290 at the largest. So they're being oversized and bullied and just pushed out of there. Well, they also keep you off balance with the way they block you. Got the first down. Crouch on the action. Taken down by Sean Ellis. So we talked about him, and he responded. Big time play at a time when it was needed by Sean Ellis, and he's a big time player. I mean, he's a stud. They call him Big Cat, like Leon Let's call by the Dallas Cowboys. And that's a play like Leon Let used to make. Here's a guy who can come out if he wants to. I mean, he's a senior. He has a chance to go back and play one more year because he will make the grades. But he will be seriously consider going to the NFL. He's got a mama in Anderson, South Carolina, who goes at 5 o'clock and checks in the bakery. And she's a great lady, and they're thinking about coming out. 
second down and long. Alexander left side. He's not going to get much. The reason I, White came up in a hurry out of the secondary. The reason I mentioned that, I mean, many times, I think it was more 10, 15 years ago when kids would come out, we would automatically assume, hey, what's he thinking? That's not a good deal. You're, you're being disloyal. Sometimes there are good reasons to come out and go pro. You know, he's a great story, too. Sean Ellis was involved in that near-fatal car accident before the 98 season. He played half this season with a pinched nerve in his shoulder and could barely raise his arm, but fought through it. Here he is tonight. He's playing a fine game so far. Third down and eight. Watch those Eric hands. Crouch with pressure, and he's sacked. First sack of the night by the Tennessee defense. Oh, man. Eric Westmoreland, who has that bad knee. We didn't know if he'd start tonight, but he did. He makes the sack, and it's a loss of seven. Well, Nebraska finally comes on third down with a sprint out. I thought they had run a little bit earlier, but Westmoreland disrupts this. Sean Ellis has pressure. Westmoreland, who Fulmer says he wouldn't trade him for anybody in the country, makes a big stop, and the defense is coming through now, trying to get Tennessee back in this game. That's a pretty good sack for a guy who's got a flat tire. That's right. Eric Parker is standing at his own 35-yard line. This is a tail wagger. He gets a block and returns it to the 45. A 40-yard punt, a 9-yard return, 10-14 to play in the first half from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Those Fiesta Bowl looking from high above. This venerable old stadium was built in 1958, has hosted four national championship games and a Super Bowl. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, Leslie Goodell with you. 14 0 Nebraska. Dan Alexander with a seven yard touchdown run to give him a 7 0 lead. Then Bobby Newcomb returned to punt 60 yards to make it 14 zip, and that's where we are. Three on one side. That's the side they come to. First down and 10, Tennessee. This is Stallworth who breaks a tackle. Stallworth all the way down inside the 30 yard line, and there's a flag thrown there. Forced down. Dante Stallworth, a 6'2", 190-pound redshirt freshman. That's his 24th reception of the year. He averages 20 yards a catch, and he has a big gain there, and this will be against the Volunteers. I think the only good thing about it is it should be at the spot of the foul where they'll mark this one off. Pushing in the back, I think, is the call. But you're right, Stallworth is a guy that I think Tennessee fans will become very accustomed to here in the next few years. Illegal block in the back on the offense. 10-yard penalty, spot of the foul. Well, there's something you don't see very often. Ralph Brown missing the tackle, and here you'll see the block in the back, and that's Eric Parker pulling this one back. Otherwise, that would have been a terrific game for Tennessee, but a very well-conceived play. Tennessee's offense only two plays over six yards tonight. That was a 49-yard pass to David Martin. So there hasn't been much offense for the Volunteers. First down, they only need one. Straight ahead they go with Travis Henry. And he's got Henry the first, Jr. depending on the mark. But it looks like he got it. They'll mark it at the 45. That's where Lauren Kaiser hit him. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. This week's question. When was the last time both teams had a losing season in the same year? How about that? Now we're giving hints. <laughs> Philip Fulmer, Fulmer was, was nine, nine years old. Okay, so you've got to figure out how old the coach was and then... <laughs> the deduct. Philip Fulmer's taken this program to another level. He, he sure is has. a good man. He is a quality man. I think I gave his age earlier. How did you? And so let's see if anybody listen to us. <laughs> First down, Watch Tennessee. Those Watch those hands. Martin gets some happy feet. Now he throws a rock and it's up and it's intercepted. The ball is intercepted. It's Walker. And now a late flag comes in. But Joe Walker fielded that like a center fielder after it. Harum off Cedric Wilson. Well, a lot happened on that play. That'll be a penalty on Dion Booker, I believe, on Nebraska, but the play will stand. And the last interception, we mentioned 82 in a row coming into this game for T. Martin with no interceptions. And the last interception, Tim, was a tipped ball. So again, on a hard pass, the ball's tipped, and Nebraska will get all over one of those. Charlie McBride was telling us that Joe Walker has always been a big play guy. The ACL problem is gone. He's finally healthy. On the return, 10-yard penalty for the end of the run. First down. So the illegal block in the back. 
Just like Tennessee had moments ago. Well, and they wasted the field position. That was the best field position for Tennessee all night. 9.30 to play in the first half. We'll be back. Well, right now, Nebraska fans enjoying themselves immensely. Why not? 14-0 Cornhuskers. And Nebraska has the ball. First down and 10 for Crouch. Gives it straight ahead. Boy, I'll tell you this, Dan Alexander, he hits that hole quickly for a big guy. Take Here's a look at the interception. Yeah, here it is. It's a, it's a hard ball. Should have been caught. I mean, that ball has to be caught, and Cedric Wilson doesn't do it. Walker gets it, and Nebraska has everything going its way. You know, not only are they running and throwing the ball fairly well, they have 70 yards on punt returns, and when you get them with special teams doing well with no penalties and no turnovers, the Arizona Cardinals couldn't beat them. The triple option, Crouch, and they get him again. Great pursuit by Tennessee. I'll tell you this, folks. John Chavis, the assistant head coach and defensive coordinator, is a fiery, competitive guy. He's up here in the booth, right up here on our level, and the whole building's shaking. <laughs> he is hot. Trying to get well, near here and let him have it. Let's see. Where is big John? There he is, there he all the way in right the right there. corner. You he's know, got to feel a little bit better now because they've, they've been playing well and they set up a third and seven here. Well, he's made good adjustments and his kids have now have made the plays. They've settled into their game. They're wanting to make Nebraska go a long way to score and also put Eric Crouch on the ground a lot. And now they're doing that. They need a big play here on third and seven, the inside pass. It may have taken too long. This play is blown dead before it starts. Oh, they were going to nuke him. And there was a hole. Correction, no flag. No flag, so they must do that play over. No, it's no play. Nebraska fans don't like it. We have a timeout. Brandon to Nebraska. Clock operator. Reset the clock. 8:14. I never saw who called that. It definitely wasn't Crouch. Well, let's watch the sideline over there and see who gets lambasted because that was opening up. Wow. All you need is a seam for number 12. And take a look at the top of the screen. Look at the top there of the screen. There you go. That, I tell you what, that's, that's Wilson, Wilson Thomas. Thomas. Come on, Wilson. <laughs> we hadn't asked you to do anything yet all night, but not call timeout. 14 to go, first half. It's third down and seven, Nebraska. Crouch to throw. He's got pressure. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Bobby Newcomb. Great coverage by Dwayne Goodrich, and the ball was overthrown. Another one of those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and Goodrich is about as good a cover corner as you're going to find. So John Chavis' defense makes another stop. Yep, yep, it does. And, you know, Bobby Newcomb has not quite had the touches that we thought he would have coming into this game. He's been kind of complaining, a little bit vocal this week down here about not getting the ball enough, and maybe that's part of the reason he's returning kickoffs and is all over the field tonight, but he is a special player. But Tennessee's defense now has buckled up. Volunteers should get good field position out of this, although Hayden Felt's got a strong leg. They've got the return on. This is an end-over-end -end kick. That's bad. Eric Parker, middle return, and he's across midfield to the 45-yard line. A 42-yard punt, 14-yard return. The Nokia Sugar Bowl has gone interactive with ABC's Enhanced TV. Get real-time stats and much, much more while you watch the game. Well, look at this. Log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com on Tuesday, January 4th for the BCS National Championship game. Enhanced TV right here on ABC. First down and 10. Tennessee. Jamal Lewis now the setback. Hands! Watch those hands! Martin's looking deep. And the ball is intercepted. It was intended for Stallworth and picked off by the All-American Mike Brown. His sixth interception of the year. There have been a lot of great defensive backs at Nebraska. See this guy making the play here, number 21. He's the very best that Charlie McBride has ever seen, and there's a great example. He comes over the top. Instead of just your one-on-one -on -one coverage with Ralph Brown, he gets no relation. Mike Brown over the top. This guy can flat-out play. Senior co-captain, 
leading tackler in the secondary, biggest playmaker, and he comes up with his sixth pick of the year. First team academic All-American as well. Look at this. Yeah, you know, he's graduated. And, uh, it, when McBride talks about him, he says intelligent. The whole package, he's the best he's ever had there. You have all that time and all those meetings and all those tape film sessions and all that practice time, and you still come out with a 3.4 GPA in your college career. That's, That's strong. exceptional. Yeah, it, it really is. That's Ralph Brown right there calling home, and there's Mike Brown. <laughs> and uh, each one of them can play, that, but Mike Brown is, you can't say one special because the other one is too. Not calling home. <laughs> calling up here, to, he's ordering some of those Tostitos from up here in the press box. Second down and eight for Nebraska. Crouch with the keeper. And the volunteers surround him. Deion Grant with a tackle. Well, we've got to give it up to Deion Grant, the All-American. He did not tackle well. They thought they may have to substitute Mickey Allen in quite a bit because he's not as good a tackler as Mickey Allen. That time he makes an open field one on one tackle with Eric Crouch. And that's not an easy thing to do. Look at those numbers, though. I, I mean, he is one of those special guys who looks like he was born to play free safety. And nobody has more interceptions. Third down and Nebraska needs seven. They roll that side. They throw that side. Davison's got it. First down, Nebraska. Matt Davison, a 6'1 junior, his 30 catch of the year, 30th. They say by the time he's done, he'll be competing or contending with Johnny Rogers as the all-time receiver. Sprint out to the wide side of the field, nothing fancy, just a quick out. And Goodrich, not in good position to make that tackle. He should have made that tackle, and Nebraska should be punting right now. But Davison's a kid who really isn't going to impress you with many of his physical abilities. He's just at the right place, right time, and always makes the play. Gain of 22. Again, they run the option to pitch out. And Applegate is run out of bounds. Number 82, Sean Applegate carries. Well, we asked the Aflac trivia question a little bit earlier. Now flags fly over on that sideline. While we wait for the flag, let's get the answer. Now, we said, uh, what did we say? Phil Fulmer was nine years old? Phil Fulmer was nine years old. When was the last time both teams had losing seasons in the same year? I'm going to say... Are you ready for my guess? Uh, yeah. I'm going to say 1958. 1959. I didn't do my homework. Oh, you, <laughs> you couldn't I've read everything I could get my hands on the last month. <laughs> Defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Or I couldn't subtract. <laughs> How'd you get through Oklahoma? They were giving you the answer. <laughs> All right. Here's the brouhaha after the play. Woo! Little push there by Dion. And then retaliation back to Nebraska. But that's not a smart player, especially coming from one of your leaders and your All-American. Penalty moves it out to the 46. Crouch throws it back. And they get a block on that corner. It's Buckholder. Buckholder down inside the 30. He is gone. Correll Buckholder with the TV or the touchdown, but there is a flag. I think you might see a push block once again or a push penalty on Nebraska. That thing did open up, though, didn't it? Oh, my. Who got that block out there on the cornerback? Well, Rayola was one of them out there. Tennessee needs this one to come back with 5.50 to go here in the, half, in the first half. Nebraska flows right. Everything goes there except Correll Buckhalter. He's the only guy over besides his blocker. And there's the push. Push was actually in the backfield against Overstreet. And there's the block in the secondary on Westmoreland. And that's another spot of the foul penalty. And we'll take it back where it'll be first and a long way to go. That's not a break for Tennessee because it was a penalty on Nebraska, but that's important that Nebraska didn't get the touchdown for the, against the Vol. So that'll make it first down in 20. They set up the screen. 
Looks very similar to the last play of Buckholter this time. Is tackled at the 41. Yeah, and Frank Solich, by the way, he's the offensive coordinator here. Frank is, uh, he followed in the footsteps of Tom Osborne, who was the head coach, so successfully also operated the offense. And there's Frank. He calls the plays offensively. And he told me a couple of hours before the game, he says, I think they're vulnerable to screen passes. And so you've seen two consecutive screen passes. That time it was defended quite well. Talked earlier about how these guys believe that they really are the best team in the nation despite yeah. that four point loss to Texas. And they, they sure look like it right now. They do. Yeah. Second down and 15 for Crouch. There's Bobby Newcomb. They've got this one well defended. Hey, but I'm as impressed with Tennessee in this quarter as I am Nebraska. Look That's who outstanding. It was. Yeah. Your guy, Deion Grant. Grant's either great or terrible. I mean, he has not made tackles. Now he's made tackles. He had the silly penalty a minute ago, but. In the long run, this guy will play. I think the key to the defense, though, so far has been the adjustment on Crouch. Crouch had 30 yards on this first carry. Since then, he's had one yard, one yard, one yard. He lost seven yards on a sack, zero and one yard. I want to go back to your comment on Deion Grant. He's good or he's terrible. That's a first-team All-American. Well, he made a silly. That's a mistake on the sideline you cannot make, and he's got a tackle consistently. Here's Crouch, third and 17. He runs it himself. Out to midfield. He'll be about five yards short of the first. Some beautiful shots tonight coming from high above. The aerial coverage provided by Tostitos. Now, I'm a Dion Grant fan. I mean, I love the guy. Don't get me wrong, but I think that uh, you, you, in, a, in a game like this against an option team that's going to get on the corner, it's going to make those defensive backs be tacklers. And that's not his strong suit, so he's having to really be tested here tonight. He'll be a pro, and he'll be a star in the NFL. Aiden Feld will try to put this one inside the 20. That's where Wilson standing at the 10. Parker is correction. And this will be a shorter punt. But it's still... Did he get it? He pooched it. He put it high, but it went into the end zone for a touchback. So they'll bring it out to the 20, but oh, how close it was. This was the punt just moments ago before we had the break. This is how close it was. It's a great call. See where that ball is? It's over the line. It doesn't matter where the player's foot is. It's where that ball is. It's the same as you're running in for a touchdown. If the ball is over the goal line, it's considered a touchdown, and that's exactly the situation there. As strong as his leg is, he will not mind sacrificing, putting it high and trying to pooch it. Here comes Jamal Lewis, and he's across the 20 to the 21, but that's it. Not much there at all. Boy, what a difference a year makes. Take a look at the Tostitos flashback, and here it is just a year ago in Sun Devil Stadium playing for the national title. It was these same volunteers. And look at T. Martin going up top to Peerless Price against Florida State and say so long. But that wasn't it. Dwayne Goodrich then with the pick. He takes that back for the touchdown, and the volunteers of Tennessee went on to win the national title. And they love to have Peerless Price here tonight. Well, of course, we're getting ready for the big national championship game. Let's take you to the Big Easy. And here's John and Terry. Well, Tim, coming up on the National Car Rental Halftime Report, we get a chance to find out where Terry Bowden got all his football knowledge. I think somebody told these Seminole fans they were having my father on at halftime, and they're trying to win the battle against the Virginia Tech fans for the city of New Orleans. <laughs> we'll also have a feature on Michael Vick, the freshman quarterback of Virginia Tech, coming up at halftime right now. Back to the Fiesta Bowl. All right, John, thank you very much. Tell Terry to tell his daddy those Hokies could play. And the Volunteers come with a lot of pressure. And the ball's incomplete. You know you have a fierce pass rush when you have a screen pass called and your quarterback doesn't have enough time to even get the screen pass off. What a defensive force. This, look at that bunch in red. Yeah, it's a screen pass, but boy, you gotta, you got to hold them up a little bit. Carlos Polk there, 13, right in the middle of all of it. I'll tell you this, too. Polk was complaining that he was held. He wanted a holding penalty. Leverton with a high, spiraling, booming punt. Take Walker all the way back to the 31. Walker returns. 
We've got 2.26 left in the first half. That was a 49-yard punt and just a three-yard return. Well, they're loving it here if you're a Nebraska fan because the Cornhuskers lead Tennessee 14-0. 2.26 to play, first half. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, and Leslie Goodell with you at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Boy, look at that. They have gone to the left behind the big guys, and they have gone after Will Overstreet, who's just 250 pounds. Play action again. And there he is, wide open Matt Davison. Davison down to the 20 before he's finally knocked out of bounds by Fred White. Another huge game by Nebraska. Give him 46 yards. Play action underneath crossing routes have been open all night for Nebraska. You've got the play action down the line, and you see Davison underneath. You have over the top with the other wing back that's wide open, and it's been there all night long. They've dropped a couple of those. And Tennessee needs to hold on right now. This is a critical juncture of the game for them. I agree. They're on the fence. And they played well. They've given up a big play here or there, but they have really played well here the last hour. These teams have only met two times, or this is only the second time in school's history. And the first time Nebraska spanked Tennessee, that was a couple of years ago, and they're doing it again here in the first Your half. Attention, please. Steve Wheeler. 2.15 to, to play. End zone, please. It's 14 0 Nebraska. To the Northwest end zone, please. Well, Tuesday night on ABC, it's the national championship game. The Seminoles look to give Coach Bobby Bowden his first undefeated season and a second national title. But the question is, can Michael Vick and Cinderella Virginia Tech upset the Knowles for the first national title ever? Number one, Florida State battles number two, Virginia Tech in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. That's Tuesday night. Don't forget also here on ABC, January 30th, Super Bowl 34 in Atlanta, all part of the Super January here on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series. There it is. That is the Sears Trophy, emblematic of the best college football has to offer, the national champions. And of course, the Volunteers won it a year ago. And Nebraska's won three of those since 1994. And they claim the team of the decade. Florida State would argue, but they sure have a right to say that up in Lincoln. Buckholder now at the eye back. First down and 10. Crouch again wants to throw to the backside, looks into the end zone, and overthrows Matt Davis. Good coverage by Goodrich. Goodrich took a lick in the wall. He's still down. Matt Davis and stand there to make sure that Dwayne Goodrich is okay, but obviously he's not. His backup hasn't played a lot. Teddy Gaines would be his backup, but Dwayne Goodrich, we hope he can get up and get back in the middle of this thing. He is an outstanding player. He's the guy that held Peter Warwick last year on this field to one catch for nine yards. Now think about that. That's how good this guy is. We saw the return touchdown. That game. Also still have a cameraman down there. Couple guys injured on that play. Watch this. And Goodrich goes right into the cameraman. We just saw him in the highlight. Goodrich had that interception, and as you said, Dean returned it for the interception, but uh, for the touchdown, but the cameraman's still a little bit woozy down there. Mm. We always worry about the players. Sometimes it's the recipients of those hits. Second down and eight ten. Here's the option of Buckholder. Breaks one, and I mean, he is tattooed on the sideline. Wow, did Sean Ellis make a tackle? Yes, he did. He showed his good speed to go sideline to sideline, but at the same time, this is positive yardage for the Huskers. They pick up about seven yards. Perfect execution. They've had fumbles this year. None tonight. They have been flawless in their execution, and you're right. Ellis can run, and he can play. And all that does is put a lot of pressure on the Vols here right now. Ellis, I think, will have many, many opportunities to play on Sunday afternoons. Critical third down play. They need three, and they don't Big get it. stop. Big stop. A huge stop. Buckhalter had nowhere to go. Overstreet has really come back, Tim. He was off to a slow start, as were many of Phil Fulmer's vols, but that was an outstanding job by Overstreet of stuffing the huge Nebraska offensive line. Official timeout for injury. Have another Tennessee player down. Looks like it's Darwin Walker. Mm. 
When playing the Zealand's after a loss of one. Darwin's had some problems tonight. But Darwin is a terrific player. He's an All-American type player. He, he's a guy that can disrupt things all on his own. They're looking at his left knee. You talk about a specimen. Here's a guy that is 290 pounds, 6% body fat. Bench press is 550 pounds. He's a civil engineer graduate. He's already graduated. Great talking with him yesterday, wasn't it? Quality. Very refreshing. Guy. Hey, folks, you want to join ABC Sports in Atlanta for the Super Bowl? Well, you can. Watch Monday Night Football for all the details this Monday night, tomorrow night. But remember, you got to watch to win because somebody out there that's watching that game is going to go to the Super Bowl courtesy of ABC Sports. You know, we talked to Darwin yesterday about one of the issues that uh, was a factor la uh, two years ago. It was what Tennessee calls is the cheap cut block, chop block. And Nebraska says, no, that's legal. I mean, that's part of our offense. Number Walker was telling me, he says, you know, they, yeah, it's legal, but they, they scare me to death with it. I'm about to get out of school. You know, I'm going to go play in the NFL. I can't afford to have any injuries. And I, fortunately, he's walking off and it looks fine. Darwin Walker sat there so long and talked to us on every aspect of life. I started calling it the Darwin theory. <laughs> Sit down, uh, oh, Bobby, the Hokies are for real. Boy, what a job Frank Beamer has done down there with Virginia Tech. You know, he was a grad assistant with Ralph Friesen, both of grad assistants when I was playing at Maryland. And Billy Hyde, who's the offensive coordinator, I played against him in high school time and time again when he was at legendary DeMatha High School. No better coach than Frank Beamer. 31 yard field goal attempt by Josh Brown. And it's long enough. And it's good. So the Cornhuskers add three more. And pull just a little bit further away from the volunteers of Texas. Or yeah. Tennessee, rather. Well, you, yeah, you're thinking back to the Big 12 exactly. championship. Hey, let's think of a game before that. That's against Colorado. That's a team that they jumped on early. Nebraska had them handled. And then late in the game, Colorado comes back and makes them just die, it makes them work for every bit of it in overtime. And here's Josh Brown out of foil, Oklahoma. Just barely. I'll tell you this, and the reason I said Texas, I'm thinking that loss to Texas in October, 24 to 20, made this Nebraska team a better football team. Yeah. They yeah. came back with more resolve than they've had since last year. Well, and they had great leadership on the team. Many times after a devastating loss to a team that is accustomed to playing for national championships, and a loss like that, you'd think would really bum them out. Hey, they came back the next day, didn't need to be motivated. Hey, you see that guy? See Josh there? Yeah. How about we saw him in practice the other day and he the was on his helmet. Yeah, he was cleaning out the dirt that the, the pranksters had put in there. You know, he's kind of a young kid on the He also, I guess, he, we asked him the biggest prank and he said, they put goldfish in my locker room one time this year. Now, what did he tell us about five gallons in his locker? <laughs> <laughs> and Phil kicks this one out of bounds. They'll bring it out to the 35. Pretty good field position there for Tennessee. Kick out of bounds. Well, T. Martin and company have to get something going here. Well, and they got they they were able to come up with good field position here. That scoring drive just took five plays. Tennessee did make the stop, but Josh Brown hit the field goal. T. Martin, three of ten, 74 yards and two interceptions. Not the performance he envisioned when he talked to us yesterday. He's a playmaker, needs him right now, Tim. He's a warrior. He won't quit. First down and 10. That was a strike. Across the middle, out to the 50. That's Eric Parker. 1.30 to play in the first half. Clock will stop. They'll move the chains. Nebraska doesn't have, per se, a, a prevent defense. That's the closest thing you're going to see to it was Ralph Brown giving cushion there and T. Martin able to take advantage of it. Two timeouts remaining. They have a good chance to put points on the board. I don't care if it's seven or three. They need points desperately. If T. Martin has time, he can throw some strikes. Almost picked off, but it's complete to Cedric Wilson down to the 44. That is great. Film study, understanding what the team's going to do. Almost an interception by Nebraska as T. Martin stops the clock. But you know what happened on that play? That is a play on that Tennessee likes to hit a wide receiver in stride, a little glance route that they call it, or a slant route. And that time, Polk broke on the ball. Tim, he almost intercepted that ball by doing film, film study. 
That's how close this was. Well, he's calling for the ball, but look at 13. He's breaking on the ball, and that's a that's a bam bam play. That's an NFL play. Carlos Polk was close. Just he, another step. <laughs> Third down and four. They throw to the outside. First down, Tennessee. Dante Stallworth all the way down to the 34. They're going to come back to that. I mean, they've had some success with that play on the flanks against Nebraska if you hit them in stride. I mean, that, that play doesn't work if the ball is not at the receiver at the right, the, at the exact right time. And it's been that way two or three times tonight. Now Nebraska's been playing two deep, five under, and now they all cheat up within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Here's the pass out to Stallworth. Breaks the tackle. Stallworth down inside the 25. They'll mark it at the 23, and Deion Booker knocks him out of bounds there. So it's another gain of 11 yards. Let's go downstairs. Here's Leslie Goodell. Tim, Darwin Walker has a sprained MCL. They're icing it right now. The good news is it's not the ACL. He is questionable for the second half. We thought they would come back to that play, and they did, just to the, other, the opposite side. And number four is going to scare a lot of people. This is a critical drive for Tennessee. Have not been shut out in the first half of a game yet this year. 52 seconds, first down, volunteers. Going across the middle, it's complete inside the 10. And again, it's Cedric Wilson. Still have their two timeouts remaining. And I like the fact that they're the aggressor. You know, the whole, the entire first half, it's been Nebraska being the aggressor. Tennessee's turning that around right now. When Tennessee takes a timeout. Take another look. Isolation, Keo Craver beaten on the inside. Just a little slant route by Cedric Wilson. That ball is thrown on time. And, you know, we asked Phil Fulmer, what's the best thing about T. Martin? He says this pass right here. The fact where he sits back on the gun, gets the ball, and gets rid of it on time. He is. That's the key right there. That's a good point. He's throwing on time. And all of a sudden in this drive, for the first time tonight, you're seeing T. Martin in rhythm. This drive, T. Martin stepping up. He's also getting some help, though. I mean, you can't do it alone. His offensive line's protecting. His backs are catching it out of the backfield. His wide receivers are as well. Well, he had struggled before this drive. Three of ten and two picks. So you really can't run. You might mess around and run one play here. Uh, rush the ball on a play. I think you, you really give it to T. Martin and put him on the corner in a pass run option. Still have 45 seconds. First down and goal. The ball's just inside the nine. I think that's what Phil Fulmer's thinking, too. Now, he lets his offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders, call plays, but he knows what's happening, and he has input if he doesn't like it. Crowd gets loud. Martin in trouble. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Aaron Wills made the tackle. Clock moves 30 seconds here in the half. Still have that one, but you can't waste it here. T. Martin audibleizing. Hand signals to the wideouts. Second down. Across the middle. Touchdown, Tennessee. Dante Stallworth with the touchdown catch. And that was a nine-yard strike. Was that ever a strike? Brett Favre couldn't throw it any harder than that. And if you get a ball thrown that hard, You've got to have someone with some nice hands on the other end, and Stallworth came through there. And he beat one of the best. There was help over the top with Mike Brown, but that ball was thrown so fast, so hard, he had no chance to get there. Alex Walls at, adds the extra point. Big touchdown. That touchdown, touchdown. is huge. Yeah. Boy, you had the feeling that Nebraska was ready just to close the door and blow them out of here. Hey, now you gain momentum, Tennessee fans. You go to the locker room, you say, T, nice job. Let's do it again. Let's keep the pedal down. And well, they haven't been shut out in the first half this year, but this was close. Look at this. Up top of your screen, little slant route, and Mike Brown tries to get involved as the safety comes over. But 
That ball was zipped, and they know how important that one was. So the scoring strike. T. Martin to Stallworth, and how and good? With 18 seconds left. The Volunteers make it a 10-point game. How good's Dante Stallworth? I'm told by coaches he is a sure first-round draft choice if he stays healthy and continues to progress. He's that good. Well, how about this? He's getting better all the time. 23 receptions coming into this ball game, and 17 of those have been in the last five games. And he has four catches tonight. You know, Bobby Newcomb is one of the returners. If I'm kicking, I do not kick it to it. Either squib it or kick it to any of the other 10 guys with red jerseys. Well, they squib it to keep it away from Newcomb. The up man takes it. And with 14 seconds Number left, 22. Nebraska will have great field position, but not much time to take advantage of it. Amazing. Guys write all kinds of motivational messages <laughs> on their, their gloves, their hands, their socks. You know, the thing that strikes us, though, Tim, I think, is we go around the country and we have the great opportunity to meet these young men. It's not an exaggeration. Most of these guys are class individuals who are disciplined, who go to class, who are good students, who are terrific young people. Now, sure, there are going to be bad apples everywhere, but that's the most refreshing thing to me about this job is it looks like Nebraska will just down this and run to the locker room. That's the favorite part of the job for me. <laughs> well, the final five seconds of what has been a terrific first half. Nebraska most of the way, a great finish by Tennessee, and all of a sudden we have a 10-point game. Let's go downstairs. Here's Leslie. Coach, you guys came out real fast in this one, but Tennessee's doing the, everything they can to make a game of it. Your assessment of the first half. Well, it's a good game. We knew it would be that way. Um, we did some good things early on. We've heard them with some big plays in the in the passing game, but we got to get more consistent uh, in offense in terms of moving the ball on the ground and defensively. Um, you know that that last drive uh, we need to certainly get a little bit better pass rush and then we're not uh, kicking the ball very well either so that adds up to not a great first half but we are ahead so that's your focus in the second half yeah certainly we got a lot of work to do at halftime thanks Thank coach you. up to Tim all right Les thanks so much Frank Solich painting the moon blue he didn't think they played that well at all hey when we come back we'll take you back to the Big Easy New Orleans John Terry and Bobby Bowden Half in Tempe, Nebraska 17, Tennessee 7. Here's Leslie Goodell. Coach, obviously that last possession of the first half was big for you guys. What do you plan to do in the second half to get back in this? We've got to help our defense a little bit more. As I said earlier, uh, the last drive we got a little bit done. Uh, our defense has kind of got the feel of the offense, of their offense, I think. Now we just get them stopped here. The first five minutes is big. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck. Back to you, Dean. All right, and I think he's exactly right, Dino. The first five minutes is big. Yeah. Tennessee closed the first half with a touchdown. They've got to come out strong here to start the second. Well, they do. They just need to run that two-minute offense here when the second half starts. I think that Nebraska had a lot of success left, both running and passing. All their passing yardage was to the left. And although Nebraska didn't take advantage of the two turnovers, they did not turn the ball over, and that is critical. Remember, 80% of the teams who win the turnover battle win the games. Boy, Nebraska started out with big plays. I mean, it was big plays right from the get-go. Eric Crouch had a 30-yard run. Dan Alexander capitalized that with a seven-yard touchdown. Of course, the big return by Bobby Newcomb. It was big plays, and it was all Nebraska to start the first 15 minutes of this ball game. Well, it was, and you've got to respect the fact that Tennessee regrouped. Chavis, as you've mentioned, figured out a little bit of what they're doing. The one thing about Nebraska, though, is sometimes they are good enough that you know what they're going to do, and they do it anyway. Well, T. Martin was five of six in that last drive. His only miss was a clock play. Down to bring it out to the 20. Take a look at these big plays. Well, we started with the option play. Crouch sets up the first touchdown, and Deion Grant just kind of waves at him. 7-0. It goes to 14 to nothing when Bobby Newcomb gets his hands on the football for the first time. So special teams early goes to Nebraska, although Frank Solich was right. They've not kicked the ball particularly well. Well, then Josh Brown added a 31-yard field goal. It was 17-0 Nebraska, and 
to be honest Tennessee was on the fence it looked like they were going to blow him out of here but then T Martin as we said came up big right before the half two minute drive five of six has only missed the clock play they scored on a touchdown pass to Stallworth and it's 17 to 7. First down and 10 for the Cornhuskers on the option and the late pitch Alexander a gain of five he's still going <laughs> and the ball's loose trying for the extra effort and Tennessee says they've got it the volunteers with a big play to start the second half it was Overstreet who forced the fumble when he was going for the extra yard. Take a look at it. Well, this was well blocked. But Buckhalter, going for the extra yardage, doesn't secure the football. And this has been the problem with Nebraska all season long. That one should not have been stripped away from him. That's the break that Tennessee has needed, although they do have a, down, a player down right now. Hey, Billy! Boy, look at this. I mean, they just... We're wrestling and scratching and clawing. All of a sudden, that ball came loose. And head coach Phil Fulmer said they had to do it in the first five minutes, and the defense responds. Well, I don't know about the, the next part of the five minutes, but the first 17 seconds has gone pretty well for Tennessee. Well, 49 fumbles for Nebraska in the first 12 games, 24 of them lost, 10 in the red zone. Take a look at this, Dean. Well, Nebraska does it in a myriad of ways. That time, Eric Crouch puts it on the floor against Nebraska, or excuse me, against Texas, and then Alexander fumbles against Texas. And then the drop pitch. This happened several times this year. And it's taken right several the times this week. We saw it at practice. That's right. They did it at practice. Now, Nebraska will come back, and they will say, as you see, the fumbles lost. Look at that. This season, 25 to 18 is the second team at Ohio. Well, and those are only the fumbles that were lost. Again, we tell you they had 49 fumbles. They got a lot of them back. 1443 to play. Still have a Tennessee player on the field. We'll take timeout. We'll be back. Injured player was John Henderson, the 6'7 sophomore. He had his ticket punched, and he's up, and he's back on the sideline, and appears to be okay. Listen to this. Wow. Helmet to helmet, hat to hat. Well, and he replaced Billy Ratliff, who was a key player for this defense for Tennessee, and Henderson's played pretty well. First Watch down, those Tennessee. Watch those Martin. It's complete. There's a flag Martin that comes in complete. behind it. David Martin with the catch. There is a flag. David Martin, 6'4, 210 pounder. And this is against Nebraska. Pass interference. So a pickup of seven, and Tennessee continues to move the football. Just the way they ended the first half. That was a very well executed play on both the offense and the defense, although there was a little bit of interference, but that was that there wasn't much room there. T. Martin threw another strike. Other than the clock play, he hasn't missed. No, he hasn't. down volunteers very loud in here team Martin with the audible Watch those. oh that one's almost picked off dangerous pass and Brown almost had it now let's take a look at Morgan Stanley Dean winner first half statistics well there's not much difference in this game now Nebraska jumps up there with almost 100 yards passing which is a little bit surprising for them but the total yardage about the same turnovers not that big a deal because there weren't any points scored off of them and the, the third down conversion. So statistically, what that tells you is we have a close game, probably closer than the 17-7 score that it is right now. Second down and 10. And Mark, same play. Caught inside the 10 by Parker. They'll mark it at the 7. They have found what they like. And even though they're going against Ralph Brown, they want to run this little glance route, this little skinny post. So basically, they get man-to-man -man coverage, bring him under, and throw it hard. Eric Parker has made at least one reception in every game this year. 
First and goal, Tennessee. Parker in motion. From the running game with Henry. And Travis Henry to the four yard line. Travis Henry started the last two games for the injured Jamal Lewis. He went over 100 yards in both. He had that terrible hit and the injury, which was very scary in the last game against Vanderbilt. The blocking on the interior much better that time, but it was a great job of tackling by Ortiz, number 37, another sprinter linebacker who was a heck of a player, and he grabbed on and held on over to get a touchdown. That was the first run after 11 straight passes. Here's the second run, and it's a touchdown. Travis Henry. And the Volunteers come out to start the second half with a lot of fire. This is the old counter gap play. Look at the left guard pulling. Knocks out the defensive end. And it could not start better for Tennessee. Just as the first half couldn't have started better for Nebraska, this half starts perfectly for Tennessee as they take advantage of the turnover. Alex Walls adds the extra point. It's a three-point game. From the eyes of Travis Henry, your eyes get big when you see a hole like that, especially when the team you're playing against is Nebraska. This guy is a power runner. He gets by with his low center of gravity being the best thing about him, and Nebraska tacklers can attest to that now. You know, he is a guy the last few games who's rattled off 132, 79, 179, and 153 yards. That's pretty impressive. I mean, they play some defense down in the SEC. He suffered that bruised spinal cord and mild concussion in the Vanderbilt game December 16th. But he's healthy, he's fit, and he's a bull. We've got a ball game. Yeah, I think now the onus goes back on Nebraska. Yeah, they still have the lead, but the momentum clearly with the guys in the white and the orange. Four plays, 25 yards for the score. And they'll try to keep it away from Bobby Newcomb. Kick it to the corner. And they'll bring it out to the 20. Well, again, a reminder, Tuesday night on ABC, it's the national, the Sears Trophy. Emblematic of the best that college football has to offer. There it is. Down on the sideline tonight. Have to keep an eye on that. Dean Blevins will try to get it out of here. <laughs> Nebraska goes deep to Davis and incomplete. Overthrown. All possessions are big. This is, I guess this is the biggest possession of the game so far. A little talking going on there with Davison and Lott. But uh, this is the biggest because it's now. But it's also big because Nebraska needs to reestablish itself. Now you put yourself behind the change. You're second and ten after going for the home run ball there on the first down. Tennessee showing man coverage on second and ten. They run the option. The pitch outside. And Alexander is tagged after a four-yard pickup. And you can hear that up here. Ray right stairs to Leslie. Good news on John Henderson. He just suffered a neck stinger. He's expected to be back. And also good news with Darwin Walker. He's already been back in the game. He had that sprained MCL in the first half. They put a brace on him and taped it up. He tried it out on the sidelines. He was good to go. Tim? All right, Leslie. Looks like T. Martin has a headache. They're working on him on the bench. Hey, everybody's going to have a headache. If you don't have a headache in this game, the coaches tell you you're not doing your part. But the eye backs and the tailbacks, that's exactly what these coaches told them. Get your, get your head in there and knock it around a little bit. Third down and five. Play action. Pressure on Crouch. And he throws the completion to his big tight end. That'll be a first down. They will move the chains. Very nice catch made by the freshman Aaron Galladay. Well, that's a nice job by Eric Crouch of buying time. He was very, very poised on this play. I don't know if you'd have seen him do this last year. Watch him buy some time as he goes backside, a little bootleg here. He feels the pressure from Ellis, finds his receiver, and the freshman makes the grab on a perfectly thrown ball. Great job by Crouch. Galladay is a low 6'4", 270-pound tight end. Big, strong guy. 
first down that. again, play action. Crouch is hit from behind and hit hard by Sean Ellis. Ellis well, followed him all the way across the field, and he's not getting up. Nebraska's going away from its bread and butter. They are a run team. They are a team that establishes physical superiority with a power game and with an option game. They're coming out here throwing on the first play of the third quarter. And now they've thrown the, tried to throw the past two plays. I think you've got to go mix it up and try to throw it right back at Tennessee, the team that you physically manhandled in the second half of the game down in the Orange Bowl two years ago. I have to tell you, after that hit, I wanted to see if Crouch would get up, but it's Ellis who stays on the ground. Take another look at this. Ellis came off the backside and followed him all the way across the field. Now watch this. Oof. Oh, you know he caught he caught a knee from yeah. his own man. He did on the way down. Well, there's timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. We've got a ball game now. Sun Devil Stadium nestled in the Tempe Buttes alongside Tempe Town Lake, which is just six months old now. Gorgeous scene for this Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. Take another look at this play. Two players are hurt. Ellis still down on the field. And it looked like Rashad Moore, number 95, who kicks him in the head, and he's hurt as well. Boy, and then 58 is Dave Volk. He's 300 pounds. He lands on top of him. The big guy is going down. I mean, Sean Ellis has gone down, is down. Henderson has been down, the big defensive tackle. Darwin Walker earlier in the ball game, and Rashad Moore, number 95 there as well. So Walker, Moore, Henderson, Ellis, now you mentioned Volk. Moore had his knee hit him right in the helmet, and he is uh, on the sideline trying to work the kinks out as well. Now, John Chavis is in better shape this time around than he was two years ago. They did not have the defensive front depth. Now he can go in and replace Ellis with D'Angelo Lloyd for some quality snaps, and Hainsworth can get in for Henderson and Moore for Walker and Jackson for Overstreet, so the depth is helping. So it'll be second down. And 15 for Nebraska. Out of the shotgun. Crouch has pressure again, throws the screen, it's dropped. Incomplete. You know, Dean, I agree with you. They've gotten away from the run, but you don't feel like these tailbacks are like the typical Nebraska tailbacks. Well, they're really not. I mean, they're, they're big, strong, powerful runners, but when I think of Nebraska football, I think of Mike Rogier back there. I think of Amon Green, who beat Tennessee as part of that club a couple of years ago. These guys are not difference makers. And when you don't have a difference maker or eye back and you don't have Wistrom, you're tied in, that puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. That comes from a guy who played quarterback at Oklahoma and was 4-0 against the Cornhuskers. Crouch on the quarterback draw. Not going to get there. Matter of fact, he doesn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Stevenson takes him down with another big play by the volunteer defense. Well, they have played outstanding. This first five minutes could not have gone better for Phil Fulmer. The defensive front. Watch Stevenson here, number 28, stay at home in the middle. Right in the middle. He's got his eyes sight set on number seven, and Nebraska is playing back on its heels. The key there, he was patient. Maintained his leverage and took him inside out. Good play by Stevenson. Oh, this is a low liner. Parker will have a chance to return it. Looking for some help, though. And he brings it back to the 42. 35-yard punt. 11-yard return. Let's go downstairs to Leslie. Boyton, and the defensive line's really getting beat up for Tennessee. Sean Ellis is out right now, but the good news is that he, too, just has a neck stinger, so there is a chance of him coming back in this game as well. Now, it's important, Tim, that Tennessee be the aggressor. They stay on the offense. You know, that first quarter, they, they were going backwards. They didn't really assault Nebraska. I think they figured out a little bit about what Charlie McBride was doing defensively, scheme-wise. And then they got on the perimeter. They used all 160 feet width of this field. And I think that's what they need to go back to, being aggressive. Now the balls have a lot of momentum. This is a key drive. Watch those hands. First down. Over the middle open. 
Big gainer, first down. Cedric Wilson with the completion. That's four receptions now for Wilson. All of them seem to be first down plays. And there he is. Cedric Wilson, a former high school quarterback, underneath the coverage. And Booker, Dion Booker, the brother of former Husker star Michael Booker, trailing. Leonard Scott checks into the ball game now for Tennessee. He is the fastest volunteer ever. Indoor sprint champion. Had that touchdown against Bandy in the last game. First down, balls. Here we go. And Martin looking deep. There he is. Almost. Ralph Brown on the coverage. <laughs> Put him in the game and turn him loose. Well, that's the name of college football. That's what it's all about right now. It's it's one on one coverage. It's come get the quarterback if you can. It's throw it down there deep and let's see who can make a play. And that time Ralph Brown wins over the freshman Scott who Tim was just talking about as being the fastest guy to ever play at Tennessee. Great coverage. Brown told me the other day he says I run down there shoulder to shoulder with him and when I hear the crowd get to the as loud as it can get I know to look back and that's what he did then he's got to make that catch it was in his hands I think Brown got away with a face mask here's T Martin Take a look at this again, Dean, because the ball hits his hands. It's not touched. Scott's got to make the catch. But watch Brown getting away with a face mask on the end of this play. Now watch this. And look at that. He's got his face mask with the left hand. Does have his face mask. And, and you know, it, it appeared to me that he was actually pushed originally by the receiver, but that's not going to be called very often. For a flag, there is none. Stallworth was down. And Phil Fulmer is hot. That's a Steve Spurrier move. You throw the hat. <laughs> I guess they all do it in the SEC. He doesn't have a visor, he's got a hat. Well, take a look. Stallworth ended on the ground. How'd he get there? We'll take a look at it when we get a chance. Leverton on the punt on fourth down. Trying to pooch it again to the corner. It'll hit inside the 10. Great kick. And again, they'll down it. This is exactly the opposite of what happened in the first half. Nebraska was pinning Tennessee back within its five-yard line. A 39-yard punt. And here comes Tennessee. Here's the controversial call. Keel Craver playing against Stallworth. Bumps him, bumps him, bumps him. Ball might be in the air. Fulmer wants a flag. No flag because that's an uncatchable ball. It doesn't matter even if he were hitting him while the ball were in the air. That was the ruling, but I disagree. Well, you know that ball was not catchable. I think he could have gotten to it. Nebraska's backed up, and they get a big gainer. And Alexander all the way out across the 10 to the 11. Yeah, you did. You think he could have caught that? But Wilt Chamberlain wouldn't have been able to catch that one a couple of years ago. Well, I know you thought it was 20 yards downfield. I thought it was about eight. <laughs> he was knocked down six yards well, from the line of scrimmage. There were two close calls hey, going against Tennessee. How about this? Yesterday, Georgia came back from a 25-0 deficit to win. Now another SEC team, Tennessee, coming back after trailing by 17. Dan Alexander bobbled the ball, almost lost it, but he's got the first down. Well, it almost worked in reverse, though. My alma mater, Oklahoma, came back, I think, 21-3. to They were down to David Cutcliffe's team, the former offensive coordinator here for many years for Fulmer. The Mississippi Rebels were up 21-3, and Oklahoma came back and almost got it. Watch this. He had a fumble earlier. Now they're thinking about it. I asked Alexander the other day, do they harp on it? Does that bug you? And he says, yeah, we're trying to not even talk about it. Here's Alexander, big hole, lead blocker to the 22-yard line. We've got another injury at the end of that play. A Nebraska offensive lineman did something to either an ankle or a knee. And it's Dion Grant, the All-American, who comes up limping. 
Rayola is the lineman I was speaking of, though, the center. And this guy is a star. Deion Grant's hurt. He's going to come out of the game. Survival of the fittest, partner. That means Mickey Allen, the sophomore, will have to come in and take the All-Americans place. Second down and four. Option. Alexander. Second effort got it. We are having some collisions out here. You mentioned Mickey Allen coming in for Grant. Mickey Allen will hit you. Number 29. We'll keep an eye on this cat all night long because you, he is perfectly suited to play the be the alley player, if you will, against option. Watch 29. I'll tell you this. He's only 175 pounds, <laughs> but folks, he knows the difference between come here and sick him. <laughs> they move the chains. First down, Cornhuskers. Again, the option. Crouch. May have lost a yard. Stevenson got there and made the tackle. Take a look at the FedEx game summary, Dean. Here's Tennessee, 22-21. Well, they have a balanced offense for the season. There you see their rush numbers, 4.6. But Crouch is total yards 128. That's a key number in this game so far. He got some numbers early, but he hasn't been able to do anything on the ground. In fact, the last 27 rushes for Nebraska, they've had four for loss, and only one of them where they've gained more than eight yards. Second down, they're calling it 10, but it's almost 11. Here's Dan Alexander again with a blocker in front of him. And a flag. This is going to come back holding against Nebraska. And this will be a penalty from the spot of the foul, not from the spot of the last play. What a great scene tonight. What a great stadium. I know there's a lot of talk around here about building a new stadium. By the way, the aerial coverage provided by Tostitos, but Sun Devil Stadium dressed up has never looked better. Boy, it is a great, isn't it a great night, great scene? This has been wonderful. I was so happy when this thing came together. Hey, partner, didn't we have fun last night with the Tostitos folks? Yeah. <laughs> In the grand ballroom, and we sat and we chatted. They asked us all the questions that we probably had no answers to, but had a lot of fun making it up. This bowl has come a long way. I played in it back in 1976. Fred Akers up at Wyoming was coaching Tim, and the bowl was in its infancy, and it has come a long way. This is I, as good as it gets. I told you, I didn't quite make it. We lost the final game to Miami down in the Orange Bowl. Missouri came that year. Here's the shuffle pass inside. And Newcomb picks up about six. Bobby a little feisty there at the bottom of that pile. He's probably a little frustrated because they've moved him all around, but he has not gotten his hands on the football very often. Never seen the flu pass around as much as we've seen it. We saw it over in Hawaii. We saw it here in Tempe. I may have a little touch of it, but I know Bobby Newcomb has it. He says he's weak. He had it the other day. Here's that little shuffle pass inside. It's a quarterbacks like it because you get yardage for the pass. You know, that's only the fifth touch he's had all night long. with time throws to the outside he's got a strike to John Bowling. Oh what a big first down for Nebraska. They needed 16 they got 17. We're seeing good football. We're not seeing plays that are busted. We're seeing precision passing and defensive players who are going for interceptions. You've got to give credit to your strong safety here Fred White number two. He breaks on that ball because he thinks he can get it. First down, Between Huskers. Wide. They go to the fullback. It's wide open. Look out, Willie Miller. He's got speed for a big guy. They take him down at the 14-yard line. But Willie Miller, the junior from Omaha, Nebraska, straight up the middle. 47 yards. the beauty of the Nebraska offense. Just when you think you kind of have them caged in, 
They get you thinking outside. They get you thinking option. They get you thinking multiple pass options. And then they bust it right up the middle. Simple little belly play, and Willie Miller is dragged down by Westmoreland. Oh, that's a touchdown. Willie Miller, 6'1", 245 pounds. And for a big guy, he can roll. has been terrific this year. Here's what they've done. Yards allowed against these teams. Eight yards. 123, 162. Their average, 176, there is we what go, they have go. lost. They held them that much below their average, each of those teams. One team rushed for more than its average. Those Play those rounds, drops, looks, man open, touchdown, Galladay, Nebraska. <laughs> lull you to sleep they come back with play action they're aggressive that's what you gotta like and we were questioning earlier whether they should be throwing the ball as much as they are well when you catch it it's a good call Frank Sowich likes his call there that was a strike okay we're they had another one Josh Brown perfect <laughs> Tennessee is so banged up defensively now, it's going to be hard to stop the Cornhuskers. They made that drive look easy. Boy, they'll be asking some for volunteers. Here's a look at Sean Ellis. He's hurt. He had to leave. John Henderson, he was banged up. That Henderson had to come out of the ball game. Darwin Walker has been in and out. West Moreland's already playing with a bad knee, and Deion Grant had to leave. Well, and Richard Moore did as well. So we've just rattled off eight defenders. Some of them have been on blows that were just glances, and some of them have been the result of Nebraska being very physical. And if you'll remember, that's what was the difference in the game down in the Orange Bowl. So Tennessee has looked forward to a payback night. They say we're ready for this game. We're bigger, we're better, we're stronger. Well, now's the time to prove it. So the Husker lead back to 10. Leonard Scott prepares for his return. Four forty four to play, third quarter. Aiden Felt's kick is long. And Scott takes it at the two. Scott needs a block. And re all the way out to the twenty seven. Well, everybody's talking about, certainly we have all night, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, the national championship. And folks, we can tell you the Nokia Sugar Bowl on Tuesday, January 4th. That's this Tuesday for the BCS national championship game. Nebraska is going to be getting upfield with their defensive front. I think you're going to see Tennessee balance this thing out, throw it, but also bring some counter gap at them. I think the offense for Tennessee now becomes their best defense. They've got to melt the clock and get a good drive going. And Keep that Nebraska offense off the field. And that's the play, counter gap that I anticipated, but Nebraska does a good job of plugging it up. Travis Henry, the ball carrier. Counter gap, you see the counter step in the backfield. The left guard come over and crunch his man, but Nebraska's not moving very freely that time. Carlos Polk, 255 pounds of middle linebacker, is tough to move. Second down and nine. Again, they run, and this time there's a big hole. Travis Henry to the 37, close to a Tennessee first down. There's a look at a big freshman, Galladay. That's the great thing about college football. One game, you'll think you're not going to be much of a factor. The next one, you're a star. He actually was able to start in the Big 12 championship game because of that injury to Wistrom. Now he comes back again, playing well, and he is a terrific blocker on top of all of that. They move the chains. Martin has 
this. Oh, it looked like it should have been caught by Dante Stallworth. And that would have been another first down, but it's dropped, so they bring it back. It'll be second down and 10. Steve Warren, great job of pass rushing here. He gets an old hand slap and a rip on the center. Watch him come right in the middle of your screen. Big, strong, powerful guy. 6'2", 305 pounder. And he's a guy that had to work a lot in flexibility in the offseason to even be out here because he's had a lot of back problems. What was it he was doing? Kickbox, kickboxing. Yeah. And tried to get him to take ballet. He says, I'm not taking on a 2 2. I wouldn't laugh at him if he did. So they put him in martial arts and it's helped. Coming with a blitz. They run against him. But it doesn't help. Aaron Wills with a tackle from behind. Will showing speed. He's not the fastest of, of defenders. But when you spread that offense out, when you, when you make them go east-west, you have a great chance of tracking them down because Nebraska's going to free up a lot of defenders. They'll just, they're just going to outnumber you. If you have seven blocking, they're going to bring eight. If you have eight blocking, they're going to bring nine. More Nebraska people here tonight than Tennessee, and they're on their feet. Third down and long. Only one of eight on third. They throw this pass. They've got it up for the first. That's Cedric Wilson, the go-to guy, his fifth catch of the night. And that's the play they like in that situation. They like that little quick slant. We've talked about it three or four times tonight. They see a hole. They, you bring your man in motion. You bring Wilson in here. He stops because he can't get any closer to his offensive lineman, and he knows he has a soft spot in the zone. He hits that soft spot, and T. Martin is able to zip it to him quickly and pick up a critical first down. Leonard Scott checks back into the ball game. He's the speedster. Pass is dropped again by Stallworth. So on this one drive, Dean, Stallworth has dropped two passes that should have been caught. Oh, and that one was big. I mean, Keo Craver, for whatever reason, wasn't ready on that play, Tim. He was buckling his chin strap, still not buckled. He wasn't in position. And so Stallworth has a step on his man, and I think he would have gone the distance. Let's watch this. Watch him. Keel Craver is following him by about two yards. Oh, that's two on this drive that he should have had. Keel Craver might have gotten him there. If he doesn't make that tackle, he's free to go 52 yards. They need 10. Pressure. It's 101. And Parker can't get around the corner. Hey, want to join ABC Sports in Atlanta for the Super Bowl? That's where ABC's going. We're going to cover the Super 45 to play third quarter. Nebraska by 10. Third down. Who makes your plays? T. Martin. He's got. He'll be called on again. They need five. Incomplete. It was intended for Cedric Wilson. Well, let's take you back to Tostitos' action play of the game. Bobby Newcomb on a punt return. It was 7-0 at this point. Dean, he broke this one for 60. Yeah, he's got the speed. You know, he's a sprinter, and watching him in practice, and you can see it right there, he runs like a sprinter. He gets those legs up, and I've, I've, I even asked him, I said, has anybody ever told you you look sort of run like Carl Lewis? He looked at me like I was an idiot. What? I love those Tostitos action highlights. Another pooch kick. Will they get it? Whoa! Got it on the one. Goes out of bounds. Oh, my! David Leverton again, a 45-yard punt. They pooch it inside the 10. It's marked at the 1. And, and we, another Tennessee player is shaken up. 45-yard punt. Cornhuskers first to Well, we have a chance. Let's remind you, coming up next Sunday, here is like 8-1 to one Nebraska. You didn't hear a lot of noise when that ball was kicked out of bounds on the two yard line whereas had that been Nebraska it would have erupted and I guess part of the reasoning is that the they traveled here a year ago for this championship game and there were other concerns as well. You know Dean we were talking about all the injured players for Tennessee and we mentioned Sean Ellis as being shaken up several times tonight and here he is again down after that great punt. Yeah I think he's 
I think he still is down, but I'm not sure. All right, let's see this one go out of bounds here. Is it, <laughs> that was about six inches from going into the end zone. Actually, that is not Sean Ellis. Yeah. I think that's Gaines, the backup. Teddy Gaines. Yeah. I was going to say, if Ellis got down there that quickly to cover that butt, he really had some speed for a big guy. Ellis says, hey, Tim, I'm here. I'm ready to go. Oh, Sean, Sean knows I love him. So <laughs> I'm trying to give him that pop, say how fast he is. Sean Ellis is back in the ballgame. That's good news as Gaines gets helped off. Looks like looks like Gaines will not be back in the game. That, that doesn't look good. All right, now Tennessee's right where they want to be. I mean, if you're going to give the ball to Nebraska, you might as well make them go 99 yards. Two great programs, two great traditions. Look at the field position in this half. Just the opposite of the first half. I mean, everything that has happened here in this quarter is just the opposite of what happened in the first quarter. Well, the last time Nebraska had it, they went more than 90 yards and got the touchdown. Here's Crouch. Paul dangerously close to the goal line. Gets it out. Maybe a gain of one. That's a little wrinkle to their option game. It's really a quarterback keeper. They don't even have the option to pitch that ball back as Crouch has his backfield mate. Watch his man in the backfield. He'll come through the fullback. He's not giving it to him. So the eye back comes up and is the lead blocker on Westmoreland who makes the tackle. His Tennessee defense is banged up, but you don't want to fool around in that end zone too long. They'll get after you. Second down and nine. Big hole. It's Miller again. He broke the big one last drive. All the way out to the 15. It's a first down Huskers. Nebraska doing the blocking up front. Russ Hochstein. Look at him, number 55, open away there. And he also gets a block by Applegate. And Tim, that's the scary thing. When you play this pressure defense as everyone is playing around the country and you get nine or ten men within three yards of the line of scrimmage, you bust through that line of scrimmage and it's pay dirt. Hochstein, 6'4", 290, got a big block there. You're right. Here's Crouch. You know, Dean, they, they run that speed option. Very rarely they run the triple option. They actually look, run it oftentimes like Fisher to Berry runs the, right. the yep. uh, fishbone out there at Air Force, but they haven't been giving it to the fullback until this half. And both times it looked like it surprised Tennessee they didn't have anybody on Miller. Some of those are called plays where they give it to the fullback. Some of them are reads where they read the five technique. Great quarter of football, both teams. The end of the third quarter. A 10-point game. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Stadium built back in 1958. It's hosted four national championship games and a Super Bowl. And tonight, it's got a dandy. Nebraska jumped out to a 17-0 lead. Tennessee closed the half with a very critical touchdown. T. Martin to Dante Stallworth. They scored immediately to start the second half. And then in the last possession, Nebraska went 96 yards. They're ready to go 99 on this drive. At least they're trying. Dan Alexander around for the first down again. But what a ball game. Well, it's wonderful. And I, I told you earlier in the week that I felt that either way this was going to be a game that goes into the fourth quarter. I felt that both teams were good enough to stage a comeback and they are so evenly matched. But having said that this is a huge drive. Tennessee has fallen back to 10 points down and although they have played well if Nebraska takes this and scores it will be mighty difficult for Tennessee to win this football game. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, Leslie Goodell with you from Sun Devil Stadium. Another big game by Alexander. They're just starting to pull them and push them and shove them. And the Nebraska strength starting to show. Yes, it is. But let me ask you, partner, how about the fourth quarters they had against Texas? The fourth quarter they had against Colorado? Complete breakdowns. Well, I think that you build on that. I, th I think that the offensive staff gets with the offense and says, guys, you know, something's wrong here. We've got these fourth quarter classes. We have this great weight program. We have this great conditioning program. Where are we in the fourth quarter? Really, the only two bad quarters they've had all year, the Huskers 
could be playing for their fourth national championship since 1994. But they lost to Texas by four. They had to battle Colorado right down to the line. First down, again, it's Dan Alexander. And again, they're just starting to wear down that banged-up defense of Tennessee. Well, it is banged up, but you've got a lot of starters in there for Tennessee, and it's not taking Nebraska three downs. Usually when you have a team running it at you, you have to grind it to pick up the first down, and Nebraska's doing it in chunks of one down and two down. They don't need a third. You look at Phil Fulmer, obviously concerned. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, told us he wanted to play a lot of people early to keep the defense fresh for the fourth quarter. He thought that would be a key, and certainly right now they look tired. Absolutely. Whips. First down and again. It's the tailback. Buck Holter, big hole. Buck Holter all the way down to the 20 yard line and inside the 20. Perfect call against that blitz. You talk about a lane opening up. Raynock Thompson, Westmoreland, they all come on the blitz. They don't get there. Look at the alleyway open up. 63, James Sherman out front doing the blocking. And that leaves Grant laying a block, body block to get Buck Holter down. Nebraska getting them in chunks. That was 27 yards. And they haven't had to throw the football at all. It's been all on the ground, Tim. That's a good block. Fullback, Miller. Carrying tackles, tacklers to the 13. By Walker. You have the feeling if Nebraska scores here, it's KD bar the door. Tennessee needs a turnover. It appears that it's going to be hard to stop these guys. They need to make a force a turnover, and Nebraska has done that a lot this year. Second down. Big hole. Alexander inside the five. Correction. It's Buckholder down to the three. This is power football. Look at Rayola, the guard, no, the center. Look at Willie Miller, 15. And Buckhalter is not really the power back. He has good power and 225 pounds. Alexander's more of the north-south bull, but he was a hard man to pull down. Mickey Allen stopped a touchdown, or at least delayed it. Here they go again. Straight ahead. Touchdown, Corral Buckhalter. Nebraska start to flex its muscle. This drive was nothing more than Crouch turning around and handing it to the big guys behind him and saying, up front, Hochstein. Look at 55, blow his man out of there. Every one of the defenders is back in the end zone. Extra point is good. Tempers start to flare. Hello, everybody. Hochstein with a key block to the van. These guys said, we'll come out. We're going to take care of Tennessee. And then if there's any way you can arrange it, we'll meet the winner of Florida State Virginia <laughs> Tech. <laughs> Temperature continues to drop on a chilly night in Tempe, Arizona, but Nebraska continues to heat up. 31 to 14, and in the last two drives, the last two possessions, the Cornhuskers have gone almost 200 yards. Wow, well, that's uh, that's pretty impressive, particularly the last one coming all on the ground. Tennessee knew what was coming at them and couldn't slow them, so now they've got to have a big punt or big kickoff return or score quickly. A 96-yard drive, 99-yard drive. Now Tennessee has to answer. Here's Leonard Scott. It's back to the 19. 11:52 remaining in the ball game. Hey, Charles Squab will make contributions to the scholarship funds of each of the universities represented in the bowl championship series. We thank him for that. Hey, what a heavyweight fight. We said earlier that this game was going to be like a heavyweight fight. Two terrific programs. One team came out in Nebraska and got a knockdown in the first quarter, first few rounds. And Tennessee got off the deck. 
They knocked the Huskers down. And now Nebraska's back on top, seeing if Tennessee can do it. Well, they said T. Martin is a warrior. We'll find out. He's got to make some big plays. Here he is, looking deep, looking for Scott. Overthrows him. Had him, though, Tim. He that was had Stallworth. Him. I said Scott. Yeah, well, those guys are both going to be stars. I mean, you can put them together because Stallworth and Scott are two speedsters who have terrific talent as young receivers. And when I think of Tennessee, I think of terrific wide receivers. You know, Peerless Price was a big playmaker last year. But one of the things that hamstrung this team this year is they didn't have great wide receiver play early. Cedric Wilson was a go to guy, and the other guys finally developed. Second down and ten. Watch those hands! Swing pass. Stallworth drilled. Ralph Brook, or Ralph Brown rather, just tattooed him. If you remember in the first half, this was one of the effective plays that Tennessee went with. You make a halftime adjustment, you say, Ralph Brown, stay in there. Be looking for him and then lay a Cold. lick on him but when, he, when he doesn't know it's coming. That's the kind of hit that'll rattle your fillings and put your eyeballs in your forehead. <laughs> Third down and 13. <laughs> Goes over the middle and here it's caught by Wilson. <laughs> they needed 14, they got 13. Now you got to think about it. 10.50 to go in the game. If you don't make the first down here, it's over. It's over. Let's see. What do we... I think you've got to go for it. I think Nebraska is doing too much offensively to not go for it. 10.39 still to go. Bill Fulmer will ponder this one. Tennessee down by 17. It's fourth down and one in their own territory, and the Volunteers are going for it. Play action. Got the first down with what a terrific catch. catch by Johnson. Oh, my. Wide open. T. Martin did not throw a great pass, but Neil Johnson made a terrific catch, and they never throw to their tight ends. They throw their tight ends about three times a year. That is a wonderful catch. Look how wide open he is. Well, and I thought T. Martin would run that ball to pick up the first down. He's oh. shaking his head. He's going, man, you just saved me. I'll Game's you over this. if he doesn't make that. His daddy is proud of him. Neil Johnson's dad played at Tennessee, and I can tell you his chest is swelling up now. T. Martin to throw. Does. Has a man open. It's another first down. You know, Tim, one of the reasons that I felt that they had to go for that is that their defense is so tired. They were on the field for those two long drives, and if you put them back out on the field, if you punt the ball and give it back to Nebraska with good field position, I don't think they're going to slow them down. Now you have a chance to go score and rest your defense. Stallworth made that catch, and had he been able to stay in bounds, he was gone. Look at the average yards on first down for Nebraska. Nine yards. First down, Tennessee. Now the Volunteers fighting Nebraska and the clock. Here's the draw play. That's Jamal Lewis. And he gets four and a half. That's like sitting down in Vegas at the blackjack table and being on 16. <laughs> yeah, you know, hit me. Second and five with the 49. Second down, call it a long five. T. Martin trying to change. He wants to go to the other side. Repositions his back. Hands! Now looks to the outside. And it's complete. And Stallworth is out into Nebraska territory. He'll need about two more for the first. That's seven catches now for Dante Stallworth. All with the red shirt freshman from Sacramento. Boy, they are taking their time, Gene. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're in a, a rush mode, but I think you take care of your business. I mean, you, you get in the huddle, you get back there, you get ready to go. The problem is the play call is very slow coming in from Randy Sanders at this point. Well, there has to be a sense of urgency because we go under nine minutes now, and they still need three scores. Third down. 
close two. Henry, big hole. Inside the 40, but there's a flag down. Travis Henry had just checked back into the game. By Booker. Penalty marked out. Critical call here. I would think it would go against Tennessee based on where it was thrown, but that was the counter gap that was open. It is against Tennessee. Boy, last year's game, the national championship game, Tennessee and Florida State, 23 penalties, seven turnovers. Yeah. Both teams very, very rusty. Six men at the line of scrimmage. Mm. Five yard penalty. Six Still third down. This year, both coaches took different approaches, or at least Nebraska and Tennessee coaches took different approaches. It's been a fairly well played ball game. It really has. Really has been well played. That's a that's a penalty though that really hurts. Six men on the line of scrimmage. You've got to have seven. And that's not a procedure holding. That's a mental mistake right there. Well, instead of a first down, they now have third down and six. Watch those hands! Mark throws to the hook. He's got it. It's a first down. And again, it's Cedric Wilson, the go-to guy, who picks up the first. That's seven catches for Wilson. T. Martin lighting it up right now. He's finding the soft spots. Here he gets Deion Booker playing soft in the secondary, as you know you you have to. And that coverage, they're in the right they're in the right situation. They have the right play call for that coverage. Martin with pressure falls loose. Tennessee gets it back, but they'll lose four. Aaron Wills forced the fumble. He had the pressure. You know, Dean, the game has changed to the point where Booker and Brown have to be involved in a lot of tackles. You're seeing the strong safety becoming almost like a linebacker. Yeah, yeah, you really are. And this is one that could have been Katie bar the door for the guys from Tennessee. But that's Kosey Coleman, the All-American there, the, the junior who I think is going to come out after this game into the NFL saving the day or at least giving Tennessee a chance. Just talking about the safeties. Booker goes out. Finley comes in. Second down and 14. Here's a double pass. Wilson's going to throw this one. Has a man wide open. It's Stallworth. Touchdown, Tennessee. Oh, my. The Vols come rolling back. This is a play that I saw the other day in practice, and it went exactly like this. We told you that Cedric Wilson is a former high school quarterback, and this is a play that was set up perfectly. They've run this play a couple of times tonight, but this time he pulls up, it was a lateral, and he throws a strike. And did they ever need it, Tim? Alex Walls splits the sticks. It's a 10-point game again with 7.25 to play from the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Tempe, Arizona. Stallworth with the score. The pass from Cedric Wilson. Out of your shorts. Watch Stallworth here. Keo Cravers three. Brown, the safety, is not going to give deep help. So Keo Craver bites on that one. The hook is planted, and that's a wide open pass for Cedric Wilson, who knew Tim that he didn't need to lead him the way he would if he had a defender close. Perfectly executed trick play. Pretty good combo right there. Meanwhile, Tennessee lined up for an onside kick. Nebraska took a timeout to regroup. Now they've got the hands team in, and volunteers will try what looks to be the onside kick. David Leverton is the kicker. Here we go. That ball is loose. Still loose and knocked out by a Tennessee player. It'll be Nebraska ball, but it was loose for a long time. Well, now that tells you a couple of things here. I mean, it's only a 10 point game. That tells you that number one, they like their chances of a, they've got a good kicker. And Once this goes very 10 good yards, kick. it's a live ball. Yeah, but Tim, I think it's really early. No one has possession of it, so the ball goes to Nebraska at the point where it goes out of bounds. But 7.23 to go in the game, that's a very early onside kick. Last 
two drives have just been dominant for Nebraska. Well, they really have, and their offensive line is just leaning on Tennessee and wearing them out. And these holes that are being open are big enough to drive a golf cart through. Last two Nebraska drives, 96 yards and 99 yards for touchdowns. He's Buck Halter. Actually, that's Alexander. We're up here on the. Uh, 12 stories up. <laughs> yeah. 120 some feet. It's hard this to see. This is a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to see the difference between a six and an eight on that jersey from up here. But I, I'm still a little surprised that you go with the onside kick. You know, I, I don't know if that tells you, tells Nebraska that we're a little concerned about slowing you down. You know, you can see where we are way up on top, the, you know. Top this press box. This is a brand new, fairly new press box that they built when the Super Bowl was out here. Yeah. Super Bowl 30. That's right. I was here. Cowboys beat Steelers. Made us a lot higher than we used to be when we come out here to do games at Sun Devil Stadium, but it is gorgeous. First down, Cornhuskers. That's Alexander, and he almost broke it. Now, for what Alexander doesn't give you in the wiggle stuff, in the in the swivel hips, get outside and pure speed, he gives you back in power. This guy will run over you. He says, I'm a bully with the ball. In fact, remember he talked about his school where he's the bully at the school. He would he would scare the bullies off. He was his principal's favorite guy. Alexander now over 100 yards. Clock continues to roll down to 620. Again, also back to the eye, back close to another first down. He'll need the other yard. Hey, he ruled the ring and bowed to no one. The world premiere, Muhammad Ali, king of the world. Coming up Monday, January 10th on 8. Because there's only one, and then it'd be pretty tough mid play that oh, the <laughs> Krauts gets the first. Let's go downstairs to Leslie. Thank you very much, Tim. I'm with a man who's had his share of success on the Nebraska offensive line. Dave Remington joins me now. And Dave, what brings you back here to uh, Phoenix? Well, I'm a special guest of the Fiesta Bowl. They've, they've treated me well. I've had a great time, enjoying a great game. Every time I feel like I can let down a little bit, Tennessee comes with a big play, and we've got to come back here and watch this thing again. I'm getting ready to go back upstairs and have a few uh, sodas, you know. But they, they let me do it. What are your thoughts on the Nebraska team that's out there, though? They seem really strong. <laughs> well, they, they have a tradition to have a good offensive line, and with a Dom, Dominic Rayola, their center, I think people forget about me and, and start worrying about him. He's a great center, and I can't wait a couple more years. How's football changed since you played college football? Well, simply the size of the guys. They're six foot six, 330 pounds is the norm. When I played at 280 pounds, I was one of the biggest guys out there. So just the size and the speed of the guys. Thanks a lot, Dave. You go get your sodas. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> Along with his Tostitos. Buck Halter picks up about four yards. You know, Tim, he was talking about Rayola. This guy's a player now. And he's he's 300 pounder, one of the four Hawaiian players on the Nebraska team. He's also a 300 pound surfer, the only 300 pound surfer I've ever known. He has a size 14 shoe, and he says he uses that to the leverage to his advantage. This guy is really good. He averages 12 pancake blocks a game. It's because of his blocks and the rest of that line. Four Nebraska players now have rushed for 50 yards or more. Alexander over 100. Flags fly everywhere. Hey, a rare penalty on Nebraska tonight. They have really played well. Looks like the big fellow on the left tackle jumped Adam Jolch. Prior to the snap, ball starts, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. You know, as good as Nebraska is, this was a team, Dean, in turmoil in September. A crisis with quarterback Eric Krauts was rumored to have quit. He went home to talk to his, his parents and his coach, and then he came back. The quarterback controversy between Krauts and Bobby Newcomb, running back Buck Halter quit for three days. D'Angelo Evans quit. They wouldn't let him back. So it was a team in turmoil. And I have to tell you, Frank Solich, God just an even-keeled guy, yeah. kept a great balance, closed the door on Evans, brought everybody else together, a new resolve, and boy, they've turned it loose. I agree. That's why he's a big 12 coach of the year. Okay. We're well, we have a chance. Let's take a look at the uh, Nokia team comparison. And let's look at how this game has turned. It has turned on what Nebraska football is all about, rushing the football, 284 yards. When you combine that with the fact that they've only had one turnover, it's usually a W. 
for Nebraska and it appears that that's what it's going to be although if they turn it over T Martin can sure turn this thing back around old adage and football coaches love to say it that blocking and running breaks football down to its simplest terms and right now Nebraska just being a bullet 16 straight runs by the Cornhuskers. Wow. First down Huskers. I'll tell you what, Nebraska was a little bit put off by some comments that Ray Knock Thomas made talking about Nebraska using the chop block, the cut block. Thomas is a linebacker who felt that his linemen were chopped in their game they played a couple of years ago. In fact, he went as far when we talked to him on camera a couple of days ago to call Nebraska wimps. And I think they're trying to send a message back that. Nebraska football, Big 12 football, is really not full of wimps. Well, the only other time they played, Nebraska beat them up pretty good, 42-17. That was in the Orange Bowl. They called this the revenge game, Tennessee did, and they are only down by 10. But to be honest, Nebraska, like they did in that Orange Bowl game, starting to dominate and just take over the game. You know, Tim, you mentioned Coach Solich a moment ago, and I think one of the things I really admire about him is he has that stoic demeanor. He's always steady and he's purposeful. But, you know, he talks about not being up and down. He says, if you are up and down, your team's going to see that. In the fourth quarter, they're going to be that way. And he didn't lose. He was unflappable when Tennessee was coming back. And he's the same guy he has been all along. And that's the kind of guy Tom Osborne was before. Him. Well, and he followed that legend, Dr. Tom. And certainly the batting before that. He's done a heck of a job. 20 and 5 record coming into this. Eric Crouch around the left side. They knock him out of bounds on the 27 yard line. Well, we're going to tell you this again because it is that big. We want you to join ABC Sports in Atlanta for the Super Bowl. Now watch Monday Night Football for all the details this Monday night, tomorrow night. But remember, you got to watch to win because ABC Sports wants to send somebody to Atlanta for the Super Bowl, courtesy of ABC Sports. But you've got to watch. You know, Eric Crouch has a great future with this program. This, this is a team that next year is setting itself up for a chance to win the national championship. He's a sprinter. He told me he's going to try to run indoor track. He's that fast at Nebraska this spring. Third down, close to a first down. I think he got it. And this ball game is over. You know, at this time, you have to say Nebraska is really as good as anybody in the country. As a matter of fact, they were so dominant. They appeared to be untouchable. But they were challenged only once after a 6-0 start. Then turnovers made them appear vulnerable. They lost to Texas. And then here they are again, just like they started. Very, very strong. Didn't get the first. Fourth down and very short. Less than one. Almost inches. Crouch got the first. And the clock down to one minute and 20 seconds. Well, you know how some teams worry about whether they can pick up a fourth down when it's short. <laughs> Was there any question about picking up a fourth down when you line up behind those guys? Let me take you through them again. Jolch, 320 pounds. Sherman, 295. Rayola, 300. Hochstein, 295. And Volk, 300 pounds. Well, there's also a youngster out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, John Rutherford, who is number 66. He spends as much time in that lineup as do Jolch and Volk. He's the third tackle, and he can play, and he's also 300 pounds. First down, Nebraska. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Alex Howard Katz. Curry. Executive producer of the Fiesta Bowl, John Filippelli. Coordinating producer, Bobby Goodrich, the producer of tonight's game here in the truck. Bruce Clark, what a job he's done. The director, Patrick McManus, we thank him for the pictures. Technical director, John Zippe. Associate Director Russell Brooks. Associate Producer Derek Mobley. He, uh, Bob's D Mobs was out at the uh, Rose Bowl yesterday. Yes, sir. Assistant to the producer Chris Damiani, John Coral. Computer coordinator Jason Shafiko. Second down and long. They need about six. Oh, my. They're just pushing ahead. He's got another first down. Willie Miller. Always want to thank our spotter, Mark Williams, our statistician, John Madry. And Mark Amento today, the Red Hat. 
all the folks that have made this telecast possible. We thank you for that. We'll be back with some final thoughts. We're down to the final five seconds. Nebraska is going to win it 31 to 21 over Tennessee. That's the final score. We'll be back with some more thoughts and our postgame report right after this. At Sun Devil Stadium, the Cornhuskers win it by 10. Let's go downstairs. Here's Leslie with Frank Solich. Tim, Coach Solich has been around for other bowl game wins, but as an assistant coach, this is your first bowl game win as a head coach. Describe what it feels like. Uh, it's uh, tremendous. Uh, it's a really a great group of players we have and a great group of coaches. Our fans have been tremendous uh, over the years. and for this team to be able to fight back the way they did when things were weren't going so good in the second half they had the courage to, uh, offensively to go on two drives of uh, 90 some yards which was tremendous we talked about strength and discipline before the game do you think that's what the team epitomized today uh, I don't think there's any question about let they've been uh, tremendous on that end of it throughout the entire season they've been a team that's been a very physical football team they believed in one another and I think that all showed today this gives you your 21st win in your first two seasons Seasons. Is this something that this puts you third all time for Division One coaches? Is that something that is important to you? Uh, well, uh, I think that's that's really great. Uh, but uh, what's really important to me is uh, what this team has accomplished this year, and and I'll take that above anything. Well, congratulations, back to Tim. Thank you. All right, Leslie, what a class act he is, and we congratulate Coach Solich finishing his second year as head coach in Nebraska. 21 and five is his record, and we talked about him following the legend, Dr. Tom Osborne. The celebration continues here in the desert and will well into the night. We'll be back with some more final thoughts right after this. Fans are right, it wasn't the Sugar Bowl, it certainly wasn't the national championship, but Nebraska feels it still has the best team in the country, and I would venture would take on either one of those teams right now, Florida State or Virginia Tech. Well, if they played outside on the parking lot tomorrow, Florida State may be favored by three points, but I'd have trouble not taking the guys in red. Last 23 Nebraska plays were on the ground. They ran out the last seven minutes, 25 seconds after Tennessee had cut their lead to 10. We'll be back here at Sun Devil Stadium and get some final thoughts right after this. Cornhuskers of Nebraska put an exclamation point to their season with a 31-21 win over the Tennessee Volunteers here at the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. Don't forget wild card Saturday on ABC next week. Buffalo at Tennessee, Detroit at Washington. The Lions beat Washington during the regular season. Stephen Davis may be back for that one. Washington coming on strong. Once again, the final score, Nebraska 31, Tennessee 21. For Dean Blevins and Leslie Goodell, I'm Tim Brandt. Don't forget, Monday night, the San Francisco 49ers travel to Atlanta to take on the Falcons on ABC's Monday Night Football. Then on Tuesday, number one Florida State, number two Virginia Tech duke it out for the national championship in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. All that on ABC. What a way to end the season, Monday Night Football. ABC Sports online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. So long, everybody.